order the uh, Town of Groton Committee of the Whole meeting of February 8th at 6.41 p.m. Uh, all counselors are present with the exception of Councilor McBride. He said he will be running a little bit late tonight. Calendars and communications, Councilor Parker. Um, nothing to report, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bumgardner. <clears throat> Uh, yes, uh, just received uh, several correspondences from uh, several constituents on a plethora of uh, items and issues um, this past week. And other than that, no further report. Thank you. Councilor Bordelon. Uh, thank you. Um, I also have received uh, several emails regarding the data center. Um, and several other, um, probably about three different emails from different folks. Um, also attended the Board of Ed uh, budget meeting yesterday. Um, and also wanted to thank town staff for, um, after our last council meeting, after we had the Black History Month celebration, um, they also raised, uh, I believe it was four more flags and two more banners throughout town. And so I just want to thank uh, you know, the town staff um, who made that happen and put in the effort to make sure they were put out throughout town. Um, and I've gotten tons of positive feedback from folks, students um, and, and such that are, are really excited and proud to see Groton um, on the map is doing such. So again, uh, thank you to all the town staff who, you know, put in the time and effort to make that happen. Thank you. Councilor Westerville. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, I also received a number of emails concerning the data center um, as well, and also the bridge um, there in Stonington, and also the tax abatement for Ms. Snyder. Nothing else. This is. Thank you. Councillor uh, Kassiri. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, on February 3rd, I attended the Town Hall and Community Center tour. Um, just want to thank town staff for taking the time to give counselors and representatives that tour and really got to see um, a lot of the things that we talked about in the past cow about the community center and the needs um, for town staff. So thank you. Councilor Franco. I watched the Economic Development Committee meeting. I uh, attended the joint Town Council Board of Ed RTM, but uh, Board of Ed budget meeting. Uh, it's actually the superintendent's budget meeting where she presented um, her budget and the prior to it going to the Board of Ed. And I have also been in contact with some residents about some of the issues that will be on the agenda tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also received the emails that other councilors have mentioned, um, attended the joint um, Town Councilors Board of Ed and RTM meeting, which was very informative on the budget, and also the visit um, to Town Hall and Community Center. I found it extremely informative to be able to walk around and look at the spaces and really get a sense of the of what's going on there. So that was terrific. And thank you to all the town staff, uh, including uh, town manager Bert for putting that together and taking us around. So thank you. Thank you. And I have nothing else other than just to thank the various um, department heads who uh, took us on the tour of the town hall and the um, uh, new community center, Old Fitch Middle School. Um, thank you for that. Very informative. It was good to see um, the state of uh, those buildings. So on to number four, pool of minutes can be found on page two. I make a motion 
to approve the committee of the whole meeting minutes for January 25th, 2022, so moved. Second. Second Parker. Okay, moved by Melendez, seconded by Parker. Councilor Franco. Um, on page 11, I have two items that I would like to put in. Um, where it is the last motion right before the vote, it says committee of the while, not whole. So maybe that, I know it's not a big deal, but it's just a little typo. And then also on the fifth paragraph down, it was about how I had asked Councillor Westervelt to recuse himself. And it does not state in there that he also, I would like it added that he also has retained an attorney for the Mystic Education Center. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right, Council Bordelon. I just wanted clarification. Um, are we doing detailed minutes now? Because if we are, and we're going to edit them like that, then we should add a bunch of other things. So, John, are we adding? What type of minutes are we generating? Because in the past, we've discussed that we wanted them to be in, as informal as possible, but also then to note um, full um, information would be um, available on. You know to watch the video so which 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 direction did we go uh, lisa would be adding the, the minimalist direction with lisa right. adding to uh referring to the full video right because i think if we're going to edit things um i mean i didn't add a bunch of things that i would have added here but it was stated at the last minute that these were just going to be descriptions and not full thesis, you know, um, and um, adding personal remarks that, you know, benefit one side or the other. If it was going to go into greater detail, it would be found on the video as stated. So um, I, I don't really agree with those edits because if that's the case, then we should all have the chance to go back and relook at these. So I ask that we do not make those amended and they are available to view on video as stated by counselors who have stated such that did not want long uh, minutes for that reason. So um, I ask that, that not be added. Thank you. Council Westervelt. I just, I, I guess I need to make this clear. Um, attorney McCausher is not my attorney. Attorney McCausher was given a retainer for the Mystic Oral School Advocates, not myself. Point of order. What is your point of order? We're approving minutes and we it's not for discussion on the topic of the minutes. I am asking for something to be in there that was actually stated in our meeting. And these are minutes from that previous meeting. I also asked for it to be on the record. Um, so. But, right, but okay, but hold on. But you stated that you wanted it in the meeting that he had hired an attorney. He had retained a attorney. I think he's explaining that he has, in fact, not. Um, but but it's, it's it's the minutes from that meeting. This has happened in the past. It is the mi minutes from the meeting. It's not about an explanation of what the the conversation was in that meeting. I am asking for retaining an attorney for the Mystic Education Center be added because it set, states on here. But I asked him to recuse himself due to being the co-chair of the Mystic Oral School Advocates and an adjacent property owner. And I had also stated at that meeting that he had also retained an attorney for the Mystic Education Center. Okay. I understand that you might have said that, but that is not necessarily a factual statement. So what? I might have said that, but it's not factual. Right. He personally does, this has not really have to get into this detail. It doesn't matter. It's I will not be supporting this amendment. Um uh oh my God. so seeing no other discussion, I'll call for a vote. Passing the minutes as amended by Council Franco. You can't just shoot today. down an amendment. I'm I'm calling for the vote to pass the minutes as amended by Council Franco. All in favor say aye. Aye. Councilor. Is that three in affirmative? Councilor Franco, Councilor Kassiri, Councilor Jones? Opposed? Parker. Opposed. Councilor Parker. Councilor Parker, are you in favor? 
I was in favor. Okay. Opposed. Councilor Bordelon, Councilor Melendez, Councilor Westerville, Councilor Bumgarner. None abstaining. That fails. Four in favor, four opposed, none abstaining. Okay. Council Bordelon, do you have a further discussion? Um, yeah, I just, so how do we move from here? So it's, it's not going in, correct? Right. We're going to vote on the minutes as, as originally, right. originally written. With right. Council, with Council of the Wild, though, corrected or not? Correct. That, that's not what was stated. So right. we need a new amendment. I'm sorry. What? I'm a little who lost. To put, who wants to put the amendment on the floor, correcting the typo, hold to while? Councilor Kasiri will. Okay. Parker seconds. Moved by Kasiri, seconded by Parker. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed. Abstentions? That carries seven in favor, one opposed. Franco, zero abstentions. On to new business, miscellaneous ad hoc committees and appointments. And uh, Mayor Melendez? Yeah. Point out two things that should be removed from that list. And this is my understanding notification. There's no vote on this, but it'll go to personnel and then back to council. But school readiness council, Kevin Trejo, my understanding is he was already appointed. So that can be removed. And then Thames Valley Council for Community Action. That's actually a direct appointment from the mayor. So that should be removed. Okay. Thank you. Uh, should I read these out or is it good enough that it's in the in the packet? I don't think it needs to be read out. Okay. It's available for everyone. Thank you. So on to the next item, 2020-673, North Stonington Bridge. Three people have their hands up for this topic. Council Bordelon. Uh, thank you. Sorry about that, Council Melendez. Um, so these, if you are interested, this goes to personnel appointments, and then they make the final decision. Is that correct? That's correct. So if you were interested in any of these, you can... Do we do you recommend that we send a letter of interest or how do we go about that? Yep, you can uh, contact the personal appointments committee, Chairman Bumgardner, uh, okay. with your interest. Um, the the South um, South uh, Eastern Connecticut Water Authority representative advisory board has nobody on it. I would be willing to put my name on that. It looks like it meets um, quarterly around 7 p.m. If I'm if I'm correct, and it rotates at different uh, uh, libraries. So um, since nobody is on that, um, and it is very hard to find positions on here um, that are available in the evening, um, some that I'm very interested in are during the day. So um, it was you know it's extremely hard to uh, work around working hours, but um, I would definitely you know love to have my name onto that one. And there's nobody on it as presented from the mayor. Um, to clear up, once it's done with personnel, it does come back to the, excuse me, I swallowed wrong. <laughs> it does come back to the council. Right. It'll be on our consent calendar. Right. 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 So I will, um, I'd like to add my name there if possible. And Thank should I also you. send that on to personnel and appointments as well? Uh, that one, you'll, you'll just, for that one, you'll just be listed in nominations at our next meeting. Thank you okay. for volunteering for that. Thank you for your help. Councilor Franco. I would like to remove my name from the town council RTM board of ed committee. Okay. Councilor Baumgartner. Uh, yes, um, I have a question. Maybe uh, John would be the best person to ask, um, uh, Manager Burt. Now, there were a few appointments um, to various more regional boards and commissions, uh, uh, organizations like SCARA or SEAT, where 
I believe it, it, I know in the case of seat, there are two members appointed. Um, I wasn't sure if that was also the case for Scara um, on the list provided. Uh, there, as as uh, Councilor Bordelon mentioned, there was an opening for the water, um, the the regional uh, water planning group, um, but there was also an opening for um, the uh, for for Scara, and so I wasn't sure if there was two like an, a a a regular member, an alternate member. Um, so do you? <clears throat> and Scara, we have Public Works as one of the members because okay. yeah. Um, I'm not sure about the water authority. I don't have that right with me. Um, I okay, so that, a little digging. For that, I, I just wanted to clarify. For, so for Scara, that um, o opening would not be for who, whom the, well, uh, there's, the there's two. Th there's two spots, if I remember correctly. One is taken by um, the public uh, public works official, and I think there's one other spot. Is that your understanding, if you remember correctly, Mayor? Do you remember that? I yeah, that's my understanding. Okay, yeah, so see, it's it's Stacy Leach, correct? All right, you know, and I'm looking at the Scarra website now, so there's an alternate. So, um, you know, I, I'd be I'd consider um, putting my name forward for the alternate position, um, just so we have council representation. Um, and I okay. think that with that, there there shouldn't be any more openings. But uh, yes, looking forward to um, getting these in uh, personal appointments. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you know other hands, we'll move on to 2022-673 North Stone <clears throat> Bridge replacement discussion. Starts on page 15. And I want to welcome the first select woman uh, of Stonington, as well as the chairman of their board of finance. We, we actually have Lynn Young replacing him. Uh, okay. He's working. Lynn, Lynn's another member of the Board of Finance. And, and just a little reminder to everyone, the uh, following the 500-year storm in March of 2010, that's when the uh, bridge was found to be in poor condition. Um, that's kind of what kicked off all this. Uh, there's been different times Stonington has put. Now, we have a grant for about it, the cost of the bridge right now is estimated at 1.24 million. Um, we have a grant for about 600,000. So we need the other 50%. There's been different times and different budgets that either Stonington or Groton have looked at uh, funding, but it's never meshed up. <laughs> you invited the uh, Stonington delegation to discuss for this upcoming budget. John, do you want us to? Um, sure. Go ahead. So thank you guys so much. You're muted. Oh, you're muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that. You think we'd be better at this by now. Um, so it's really nice to, to meet some of the newer people um, on the, the council and, and some old familiar faces as well. So thanks for having us. Um, and Lynn, feel free to, to jump in here at any point, but um, a thank you for, for her for joining us. Um, so really, we're here for any questions you guys might have, and just also to say beyond the bridge, if there's um, ever any topics you want to talk about or partner yeah. on, um, John works really well with us, and we really appreciate him um, all the time. A very uh, great partner to our a neighbor, but if any of you ever want to yeah. reach out or talk, we're always happy to do that um, separately. Um, so don't don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and then so on the bridge, I'd say just to give you a quick update of where things are on our side. And I think Chief Richards is on the call too. So of course, Chief um, jump in here with anything. But um, essentially, like John said, there's a, a long history going back that we don't need to to go into too much. But going looking forward, <clears throat> what we've done and we've communicated. Um, pretty publicly, I think in the past is about two, almost two years ago, we started um, a bridge asset inventory in Stonington, which was largely prompted from discussions from this bridge and a, another bridge that we share with Ledger, realizing that we don't have a good handle, at least in Stonington, on all of our bridge assets. Um, so we've undertaken the first phase of this bridge asset inventory with our town engineer and director of public works with support from our board of Slackman and board of finance. Um, and we're hoping, expecting that the second phase 
phase, which will be a deeper dive um, of all of our bridge assets, um, will be done probably later this spring or early this summer, at which point we'll have um, a formal presentation with our Board of Finance. And it's really at that point that we'll be able to have a better handle on what we're looking at in terms of numbers. Um, we have a hypothesis that unfortunately a lot of bridges are reaching the end of their useful life or are also facing some infrastructure challenges, um, but we, we really don't know yet at this point. It's a little too early to tell. So when we have that bridge asset inventory done, we're happy to obviously share it you know, formally or informally with, with you all, do another call or whatever you guys might like to do. But I think right now it's probably too early to make any um, decisions or, or any forward motion really on any of our bridges that we we have right now. Um, but one to end on a maybe positive note, um, it was probably a year plus ago that we met um, all together with Chief Richards and um, our Board of Finance Chair who couldn't be here tonight. And we started thinking about what are the key risks um, that Chief Richards has so eloquently kind of put out there over the years. And one of them had to do with the fact that there was no hydrant on the Groton side for the residents there. And it was through some brainstorming and creative thinking that we ended up fast forward to today, actually a, an email from your guys, from John and from the public works team on the Groton side that we've created um, a mechanism to ensure that there is uh, basically hydrant access on the Groton side. So we've partnered together um, in kind of design engineering and then hopefully construction will maybe even start as soon as, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe next week, um, but in February for this dry hydrant. Assembly. So that will achieve at least one of the key risks um, for us to be able to address together. Um, it's not everything, but it is, uh, I think, a positive step in the right direction in terms of the, the risk to some of the Groton residents that they've um, engaged us on. But Lynn, if I'm missing anything from the Board of Finance perspective, and then, of course, if you guys have questions or, or want to talk more. No, that about sums it up. We have to wait and see what our own inventory <clears throat> reveals and what assets we'll have to replace or repair or do whatever we need to do and what financing and funds we have to do it with. Thank you. And also uh, we have uh, Chief Richards here um, for questioning if, uh, if you have questions for him as well. Thank you for being here. Um, Councilor Joan. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, welcome for Selectman uh, Woman. I, <laughs> thank you for, for joining us. Um, so I have two questions. One is, um, if I remember back to our budget two years ago when we were discussing this, I think this the number was the 1.2 million. Do we have any sense, and maybe Town Manager Bert uh, would know too, has, I'm assuming those costs have gone up. From I, I just got the 1.24 million last week from Public Works, so it just went up a little bit. Okay, so it's basically the same. Mm -hmm. And the second question is, is this a shovel-ready project i mean are there, yes it so is there plans ready to go so yep, if we, we have the inland wetland permit all that so it's it's really just money that we're waiting for right then we could go so if we could yes. could we get something from the uh, build better back or better would a build better back program or uh we'll, we'll uh we'll see what's out there but we you know we've been trying as, as well as uh uh representative conley and senator summers are also looking at the state level for any further funding Okay, but we just sent them updated information this last week. But if we had money, we could move. So, okay, all right, thank you. Councilor Kassiri. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to um, Stonington for being here. I really appreciate uh, you coming out. Um, but my question is for Chief Richards. Um, thank you for being here. Um, so I have two parts to this. Um, so I know that the issues are not just hydrant related. If you could just give um, the public who's not well aware of this issue, if there are any people that are well, well aware of this issue by now, um, just the synopsis of what the other emergency um, issues are with this bridge being out. And second, um, I have a letter from your attorney from February of 2020. Um, and in it, it states the continued delay and the replacement of this bridge perpetuates a potentially life-threatening hazard to citizens of the town of Groton directly as a result of the unavailability of this bridge. The old Mystic Fire Department's response times are longer. The intersection of Main Street and Route 27 is a major traffic hazard for the district's vehicles and taking the left-hand turn to access the town of Groton. Um, fire hydrant. So that area is blocked by the bridge being closed. 
do you still feel like that accurately represents the issues to this day? Currently, yes. Uh, as soon as we get the dry standpipe system in, um, the hydrant situation will be improved. Um, we're still going to have to, the closest hydrant is right in front of our station one um, firehouse, which is on the Stonington side, right at the end of North Stonington Road. We can get that hydrant to the dry, the new dry standpipe and get water over to there. So, I mean, that part of the problem is, is kind of corrected. Um, the biggest issue we have is the intersection at Route 27 in Main Street is an absolute horrible for us to make the right hand turn in, into Groton. Um, last, I just ran some statistics. Uh, last year in 2021, the Olmstick Fire Department mm -hmm. responded to 1,315 calls for service. And out of that, um, 460 were in the town of Groton. So that means that not all the 460, but probably 80% of them, the engine out of that station had to make that right-hand turn at the general store there. And it's, it's just a terrible intersection for us. Um, we actually put um, dash cam, a dash cam in the apparatus out of that station because we've had several very close calls. Um, people coming from Groton, not everybody, but they have a tendency to run that stop sign. And when there's parking at the general store, even as high as we are in a fire truck, we can't see people coming down that way. And we have to make a really wide turn to go to Groton, which puts our fire apparatus almost completely across the center line into the oncoming traffic. Um, talking to the drivers today, um, there were numerous times in the last year that it, that intersection was so bad, they actually went, they took the left, went down 27 and took I-95 over to the Groton side of the district. So that's our biggest concern. Other than the fire protection, it's a lot easier for us to lay that line and keep going instead of stopping, getting out, hooking up to the new dry system that's going to be put in the, starting next week and then hooking up to the other side. But it's far safer for us, and we always use that North Stonington Road. When we went to Groton, we'd come out of our station, take a right, go down North Stonington Road, go across Shoeville and up, and coming back from the a call in Groton, we came back the same way to avoid that intersection at 27 in Main Street. Currently, without the dry system in, if we have a, a incident up on that side of the town on North Stonington Road or over a little bit by the World War II Memorial, if we have to lay a, a supply line from the hydrant by the general store, we're completely shutting down Main Street, Route 27, uh, Shoeville Road, and it really hampers our ability to get any kind of mutual aid into the scene when we shut that many intersections and that, and that much road down. So. It's a, it's a multiple <clears throat> thing of, of problems, but our big problem is, is the, the navigating that, that intersection, taking the right end to Groton. And, and all of you have seen fire apparatus. Um, when you have a fire apparatus that weighs 52,000 pounds in a 3,000 pound car, um, the fire truck's gonna win every time. That's what we don't want. We don't wanna be involved in an accident where we have injuries or or fatalities in, in, with the car or in our fire apparatus. We appreciate everything that both towns have been doing. Um, the dry um, standpipe is, was a, a great example of the two towns getting together and, and coming up with a, an idea to, to start at least putting a Band-Aid on the big problem. So I do appreciate that. But it's a really big concern for us at that intersection. And um, just to quickly go over um, some of the stats that you gave us, um, in 2020, you reported that you responded to 1,256 calls for service, with 409 of them being to the town of Groton. So that just goes to show you that the call volume has increased with the numbers that you reported. Um, and also, I've seen um, in emails that you've reported that you've had four minutes of delay in response times. Is that still accurate? Three to four, depending on depending on the traffic at that intersection. There's been times where we couldn't even get to the intersection. Um, we had to back up, turn around and go the other way. And if we have to, if we can't get through the intersection to go to the 95 access to get to Groton, we have to 
go back up past station one. We can't go to Lanton Hill Road in 184 because the, the sharp left-hand turn will bottom the back of the apparatus out. So we have to go all the way up North Stonington Road to where it intersects with 184 and 201 and take that left. If we have to do that, that four minutes goes to about six. But yeah, our call volume's not getting any, any smaller. Last year with COVID, it, it was, well, the year before last, I'm sorry, it was down. But um, last month, January 2022, busiest month in the history of the department. We made 140 calls last month. Thank you very much, Chief. You're welcome, ma'am. Councilor Bordelon. Uh, thank you. Uh, first, I just want to say hello to First Select Woman. It's a pleasure seeing you as always and run, run into you from time to time out in town. So uh, it's good to see you out in the community. Um, and also, Mrs. Young, thank you for coming um, as long as well as Chief Richards. This is something that's been near and dear to me since I got involved, but also before getting involved in politics as a person has grown up here on High Street in Mystic. As a child, I used to rollerblade down River Road and come to the end of that intersection and rollerblade right across. And I spent many a summers and days enjoying that bridge. It's not just the emergency aspect, it's the quality of life in that area as long with the aesthetic look and making sure that things um, run smoothly. And coming up with a joint plan that we just don't get to the point where things no longer work and then we just shut them down. We should be ahead of the game being more proactive versus reactive. One of the things that I've heard from a lot of people in that area um, is you know, the need for this bridge from the emergency standpoint, as so clearly Mr. Richard states today, but also from some of the residents in the area and things like that. I guess my first question is <clears throat> um, to the Stonington, with, with all due respect, is at basically at this point, which is what you're stating, and if I have my notes correct, that it's not going to be in your budget this year. Is that correct? Because I mean, yeah. the budget's about to start flying. So at this rate, when you do come to us, it's definitely not going to be in this budget and, year. And yep. and just and nice to see you again also. Um, yeah. And I, I'd love to connect on some of your DI efforts. Um, we were following the flag stuff, um, but we could talk more. Yeah, no, and just definitely. to be be clear like we we've tried for two years now to to be pretty clear and transparent um about this bridge asset inventory so you know this has been our plan this is what we're sticking with you know we have to evaluate all we have i think it's about 18 bridges which we didn't even know we had that many bridges to be completely honest um so we we have to finish this like you said it is about being proactive and understanding our our big picture you know are we talking about Three million dollars worth of bridge inventory we have to do in the next few years. Are we talking twenty million? We we don't know the answer to that right now, and that's the same conversation we've had very honestly with Chief Richards, with the Board of Finance. Um, it's a similar conversation we also have had to have with Ledger with a bridge um, that we share with them that has a far you know, it has about and Chief Richards, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's about a fifteen minute emergency services workaround that we've had to kind of come up with a shorter term fix um because there just wasn't the funding to do it so again it, it's not that we don't appreciate the the needs that are being expressed here or completely value the such important work that old mystic um and our other fire departments do um it, it's definitely not that it's just that we have to be looking at the kind of needs of the town as a whole and there's only so much funding that we can increase each year so we're trying to get a handle like we've said proactively really understand our our bridge needs um and then be able to make a decision so hopefully by this time next year we're having a much you know, different conversation much better informed at least on our side um i, I don't pretend to know what, what your guys bridge asset inventory or your um budget needs are but um and i don't know if lynn wants to come in with with anything else on that no, other than to say that as far as this budget year goes, it is a definitely not. Yeah, thank you. I guess that's what I wanted to clear because I, I think constituents in the, on at least the rotten side I can speak on that might be streaming in is that no matter what we say here um, today, if you know if you guys are required of the last survey says 42% and you guys are not planning to budget that, then that's good for us to know moving into this budget season um, so that we have that, uh, we're aware of that. Um, I do think it is important um, from a safety aspect, as stated as well, just from you know cos cosmetic. Um, I think it depreciates the quality of life in that area as a whole, um, and it's a bit of an eyesore uh, to live next to um, if one had to live there. I do appreciate under the last budget cycle, Town of Broughton, um, we approved a number that tried to make it a little bit more safe and kind of closed on our end. Um, so that that was very helpful. But I do I can't stress enough the need to 
um, come up with a plan and find ways to make grants available and apply for grants and really just not get to the point where we start to shut things down because that then creates a, a bigger obstacle. Um, has Stonington attempted at all to look at any form of grants from the state at all or apply for any state help at, as, as, of to, as of date? I believe, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you guys took the lead, but when um, there was the earmark money, I believe we put in for this bridge, but it wasn't selected. Um, and then, like we said, we've, we've had conversations with our representatives um, and senators about this. Um, but like we said, there's there's a lot of infrastructure problems. Um, so again, like we said, you know, if and being totally completely honest, you know, if, if we're only given one bridge for help for funding, you know, the one that we share with Ledger, which has it also impacts Old Mystic Fire. Um, sorry, Chief Richards. Um, and that one has a 15 minute emergency services workaround. So you know, if if we do, you know if the state says we, and again, we haven't gotten any funding for anything, but just to put it in perspective, if, if we're given two bridges, then that's wonderful. But if they're only going to fund one, um, then we're going to have to make those hard calls because even, you know, the state and federal money will only go so far. So again, I think once we have this broader bridge inventory done, um, we will be able to have a better sense of, of what's happening. And just also to say, um, we, we agree about the, the neighbor quality of life and on our side we have worked in the last year also to um improve the aesthetic down there and i know it's it's not a, as big of an issue at all but it, it is quality of life so we have done some plantings and um changed the barricades out um on this side i'm, I'm not sure on your guys side um but i think the neighbors did did appreciate that and we also made it clear that any of the plantings can be moved um you know, in the case that we are able to fund the bridge so they're not permanent by any means but just a, a temporary fix for the area. I guess my other question too, along with this, is how much is the, some said Band-Aid, but new access to the, um, you know, the fire hydrant um, amenity that, that we're adding, what is that gonna be costing? That was 30,000 shared by Stonington and Groton. Um, and again, mm -hmm. we tried to do it as a, a good faith effort. Um, as again, this was a risk, but you know, it, it does impact Groton taxpayers, not Stonington taxpayers, but we wanted to partner on that and our, DPW and our town engineer, as well as direct funding, has gone to support that um, again, and that's just access for for Groton residents. So, you know, we do hope you guys understand we are trying to be um, good neighbors, but we also have to be careful as we're fiduciaries, but like you guys are, but for Stonington residents. So, it, it's just a it's sometimes a tough line. Yeah. So the other part of this, from the emergency aspect, one of the things with a few friends that live on that road, and again, growing up over there, I did go out and survey and kind of sit out there and literally be boots on the ground with my cup of coffee, looking around and seeing how things are operating. And one of the concerns I noticed is if there's an accident on the bridge and the response time to get to those accidents on 95, everyone filters through that neighborhood. And that bridge used to act as a segue because the average person that's maybe from Westerly or maybe even further, let's say Providence, when that when there's an accident on 95, which is only two lanes, and, and, and we're seeing a high number of accidents over there, when they come to get off the highway, they are congesting that area. When the fire trucks or emergency vehicles, let it be police, fire, EMS, try to get through there, they can't. That bridge was a nice secret passageway that the average person that's using the normal map system kind of didn't charter through there. So that I've noticed that there's a, a delay or an increase in response time during that time in its absolutely a parking lot over there when that highway is shut down. That is the main feeder for traffic to get around those accidents. And so that is something else to consider that I don't think was completely touched upon here is we as a town and surrounding town support 95. And when that accident, you know, and stuff happens up there, um, it causes a lot of concerns. I guess my question to you would be for John, um, looking at the um, World War uh, Memorial there, would there be a need to put a hydrant on that side or also talk to Chief Richards um, on, in, in conjunction with the, 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 the $30,000 $30, kind of temporary or, you know, kind of thing that we're doing, would it make sense to have some type of fire hydrant in the center green? Would that help uh, Keith, Chief Richards, John? I mean, I'm not sure. I, I guess I, I'm more concerned about safety and access. If I remember correctly, that would be much, that would cost quite a bit more than the bridge. I was, I was just gonna say, of course, we're not gonna say no to any added hydrants in our fire district, but I would be willing to bet 
to stretch to install the water line and put a hydrant over there is going to be more than replacing that bridge right and that's what i figured um okay so i guess we, this is where we're at i mean as a council there's nothing further we can do only advocate i mean it's not going to be the budget and john you i believe did state at one of the other meetings we cannot as a town cover the other 42 percent is that correct you're muted Sorry about john, that. I you can't so if the town of Groton decided and, and there was a cry out um, to have this bridge replaced and they said, you know what, we want the town to pay that 42%. Is that something the town of Groton can do? It can per interlocal agreement. Okay. Have we looked at that at all? Has Stonington, have we got to that point at least to talk about that? It was discussed a little bit either last year or the year before, but there was an interest, uh, at least among the RTM for, I remember, to take mm -hmm. on the extra cost. Um, so I guess, does it have to be something that the select woman and town of Stonington have to agree and allow us to do, or is that something yeah, we it's can- a written, It's a written agreement between the towns. Gotcha. And, and, so, and then it has to pass through our budget process. So at this rate, is that something you guys are willing to entertain to get this going? Are you asking if we would let you guys yeah. pay the whole <laughs> Well, obviously, um, to talk about it, and maybe there's a way, right, a payback from it at a later date. But is there at least those discussions? Because, you know, as an elected official, I think it's important that we have those discussions for the taxpayers. So because some people are saying, why haven't we paid for all of it? And I just want to put all of that on, you know, so people understand from home that don't understand this process. No, I mean, I appreciate that. Like, like John said, that's something we talked about at first. We weren't sure if you could, and then it seemed like you could. And I'd say, and I don't want to speak for our board of finance, so Lynn can, can jump in here, but I do think one of the, the challenges our board had when this was brought back up again um, is the, the idea that it, it's, it's a larger impact on Groton residents than Stonington residents. Um, and again, wanting to be a good neighbor and wanting to always support our fire departments. Um, we've always been willing in the past to participate, but then when all these new infrastructure costs caught up with us, um, it, it kind of hit a, a dead end then. But I think if Groton were willing to come back with a higher percentage, um, that would be a different conversation. And of course, you know, we're happy to, to talk anytime very formally. So I think, I think that's great. And I do appreciate, I know you guys are working really hard. It's no criticism of the work you're doing. I'm just trying to be the voice of the people who have been spirit, you know, really interested in this. And so I guess that's another question, not saying rotten to pay at all, but maybe we need to look at the percents and see what our community wants, maybe a public hearing of sorts, and really see maybe, you know, maybe Stonington's willing to pay for 25%, and that's something they can maybe um, do at a quicker rate. I don't know, but I think the discussion needs to be had um, and really start to break apart those numbers and what it would look like. Um, so these are definitely great conversations. And again, thank you so much for, you know, all the work that you do and, I can imagine that the infrastructure part is probably um, can be very frustrating. Uh, one more question, John, the ARPA funds, can that be used for infrastructure such as bridges? I think bridges are the, well, it's changed. I have to look at the new rule. Originally bridges were not allowed. Um, I didn't know they have that other, but sorry. No, I was gonna say they weren't allowed, but I, and I don't know your new numbers, but the, it's a much higher number you can spend now on general government. It used to right. be you had to calculate your budget, you know, mm -hmm. but now it's a certain percentage. So whatever Groton's total budget is, you can do a percentage. Right. And that's something we're looking at is instead of categorizing, taking the money, we take it all under, you can do up to 10 million. Obviously you're limited to how much you've been awarded, but you can do it for general purposes and it's much more broad that way. Right. So I think from emergency standpoint with COVID, I mean, this, we're talking about response times and joint efforts with two towns. Maybe there's some way to move these percents around, maybe look at numbers, look at other grants and see where we can go. But again, thank you so much, you guys, for coming. No, oh, thank you. Lynn, I didn't know if you'd wanted to come in. Uh, no, I mean, I have no objection to some sort of, you know, intermunicipal agreement, but the money issue remains the same, whether it's 25 or 50, we have to take care of our own house first. And we're a ways from knowing what that's going to be. Uh, the second thing, you know, not to belabor the past, but there was a point in time where our circumstances were such that we had reserved the money, but it didn't, as we said earlier, mesh with Groton. Now, you know, for, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just age, it's become a bigger issue to Groton than it has to Stonington because 10 years have passed and we haven't had a crisis or a disaster. 
so from my perspective, based on what resources we find we have and what needs we find we have, it, you know, it's, it's not an easy sell. I don't want to, you know, misguide you uh, in any way. So I want to be kind of upfront about that. The other question that I would have is um, the fire districts are taxing authorities, right? So um, perhaps if it's an important thing to the fire district, uh, a portion of the cost should be picked up that way too, if possible. So is that something that can be done? I guess, I, John, can you answer that or somebody? Uh, Debbie from Chief Richards. Um, I don't believe our bylaws or our charter through the state of Connecticut would allow us to do that because it's pretty specific that we're we're chartered to provide emergency services, et cetera. I mean, I've kind of broached that a little bit, and I don't believe our charter will even let us spend money on that kind of stuff. Okay. The other question that, that I've had that um was probably discussions that occurred before my first term on the board is, is there no way to improve that intersection in a simpler way, i.e. the traffic lights that are there and to be able to turn them red when you have a call, for example, so there's really very little traffic in the intersection, uh, you know, and better enforcement of uh, any parking itinerants down at the general store. Would there that help no at a significantly lower cost and quickly? Yeah, there is no traffic lights there at that intersection. It's Not at the intersection, but further up there is, right? So um, there's, that's there's where traffic, that's been. Yeah, there's traffic lights at the intersection of 27 River Road and North Stonington Road on the Groton side. There isn't any on the Stonington side at all. No, but there's the one coming out of River Road, which would Correct. theoretically be able to stop traffic coming down there. There's another one up on 184 that could stop traffic making the right at that where the Somewhere in Time Cafe is, which would go kind of a long distance to stopping the traffic problem there potentially, no? Yeah, well, the, the problem is for us to capture any of the uh, traffic lights, we have what they call an Opticom system on our apparatus, and it has to be line of sight. That flashing Opticon light on top of our fire apparatus has to trigger a, a, a receiver on that traffic light to actually send it red all the way around so we have we have the right of way so there's no other technology known out there that that can with an incoming call and a direction change the lights well, you, or freeze the lights could it be a cheap fix you i mean i don't know i mean you might be able to install a button in the fire apparatus or something but um say the truck isn't isn't at that station it's out at another call if it was automatic you'd be stopping all the traffic and we wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be coming out of that station at that point in time. Or if we do trip the, all those lights, you still got the residual traffic in between them in that intersection. And I don't, I don't know. I, I think that's a really tough, tough one to look at. I mean, I'm no expert on that. Only thing I can tell you is our Opticom system we have on our apparatus will capture the light to give us safe passage, but it has, it has to be line of sight. It has to, the receiver on the traffic light has to see the the uh, flashing light on our truck. It's a special light, white light on our truck to actually capture that intersection. So I don't know enough about it to answer your question whether it could be done on those traffic lights that far away. Okay, I was looking for possibly a quicker fix, you know, at significantly less money. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Burt. Um, I may be misremembering this, um, but it was my understanding that we couldn't fund Stonington side of the bridge, but we could sort of pay for it up front with, with an agreement that they would pay us back. It wouldn't be necessarily that we would be agreeing to pay more um, of, of the bridge cost. There's really no restrictions. You could do it either way. Okay. Whatever you, yeah. Okay, very good. Thanks for that clarification. <laughs> Councilor Bumgarner? Mayor, just, to say, I, just so you don't think you're crazy, I do remember that too, and I think we then just got further legal clarification, but okay. that, that was an assumption at one point. Okay, thank you, thank you. Councilor Bumgarner? 
Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And it's great to be with our nimble neighbors and <laughs> uh, frugal friends uh, across the river. And I guess in this case, across the brook. Um, but, uh, you know, great, great to be with you all. And thank you, Chief, for, for joining us as well in your leadership at the department. Um, you know, it's no secret that I've been a strong supporter of, of rebuilding the bridge since I first joined the council. Um, and, you know, every CIP item that, you know, we voted on that um, we had the opportunity to vote for this bridge. I've, you know, honored that commitment. Um, so I still very much uh, believe that we ought to fund that bridge. I, I commend, uh, you know, uh, Councilor Bordelon for proposing uh, you know, that, um, you know, in the case Stonington uh, is unable to, given obviously the, the magnitude of, of other bridges you need to fix as well, uh, unable to tackle this bridge that, you know, Groton, uh, you know, stands ready to, to fund it as well. Um, in previous correspondences we've received from the chief, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, chief, but I, I recall uh, many years ago you had written that I, I, it isn't so much a problem with uh, the response time. Uh, it's that when uh, your vehicles make a right-hand turn at the journal store with the fire trucks, um, it very much, um, it, that hard right turn uh, is um, it, uh, very much uh, problematic for uh, your uh, fire trucks to navigate under uh, current circumstances, it, it, regardless of uh, what the traffic may be at that intersection uh, at any given point. Uh, so, um, can you kind of speak to that, uh, some of the issues that your uh, fire trucks have navigating um, uh, the, the intersection by uh, the general store? Sure. As I stated earlier, um, that's, the, that's the main concern. When we come into that intersection, um, when we look right to make that right-hand turn, if there's any parking on that side, and that's the only parking you got other than on Main Street as you're coming down, um, we can't see that that intersection, even being as high up as we are in a fire truck. And then when we do make the turn with the traffic, with the parking on that side of the on the south side of the general store, we can't cut that corner tight. We have to go. We have to take a wide turn, um, and it puts us almost completely over the center line into the oncoming traffic coming from Groton. And uh, just the other morning, I, I was at the intersection. And a car went through the stop sign coming from Groton at like 30 miles an hour through the through the intersection. Uh, Stoyninton's done a great job. They've put police officers there. A um, couple years ago, they had a police officer there for three hours, I believe. And in a three-hour period, they had like 40 cars that went through that stop sign. So it's a huge problem. Um, lucky for us, I mean, knock on wood. Um, we've had some really close calls, but we haven't had any accidents there yet. That's why we put a dash cam in the front of the truck to, you know, if there was a problem, we could we could prove that, hey, you know, we we have very strict um, guidelines for our drivers. Whether you have a, a stop sign or a red light on a traffic light, the apparatus comes to a complete stop, make sure the intersection is clear and then proceeds through. And we've got, um, we've had videos off the dash cam where we've been at a complete stop at the stop sign. We, we clear the intersection, make sure there's nobody coming. We start pulling out to make that wide turn. And here comes a car through the, through the uh, stop sign coming from the Groton side. So, and there's other times, as I stated earlier, um, they just didn't feel comfortable making that right hand turn. And they went straight and took the left and went down grabbed 95 and came up and got it off on Cow Hill Road. So yes, um, absolutely our biggest concern is that, is that intersection at this point in time. But we keep talking about the right-hand turn, right, as the biggest problem there. And if people are blowing through the stop sign, maybe the answer is a traffic light or something else to make that problem go away. At least it's, it's worth discussing with whoever makes these kinds of decisions or knows about these things if there's a way to to deal with that because it keeps coming back to the same exact thing right that maybe wouldn't cost a million and a quarter dollars i I don't know who that person is um you know maybe danielle we can ask on our side uh who would know or who would be able to answer that question or maybe the state has somebody because if it's a public safety issue like that then you know it's possibly a traffic issue 
Well, it, I, it doesn't appear to me, respectfully, it, it doesn't appear to me that was really an issue um, when the bridge was functional and could be utilized because the... Uh, with, oh, with I don't the, disagree. With I the don't fire. disagree. Um, and so I, you know, I, I, but I, regardless, I, you know, it, as was mentioned, I, I would very much support engaging in a sort of an interlocal agreement, um, if, if possible. And if it means that Groton, you know, kicks in a, a few more dollars, uh, that's fine. You know, we'll, um, we'll send you the, the IOU later, Stonington. Um, but, uh, nonetheless, you know, I, I, uh, I hope we can do this more, you know, there's a plethora of things I, I think, um, in terms of regional cooperation that, um, you know, so in, in creating efficiencies and, and um, you know, really uh, taking advantage of our, um, you know, our, our um, you know, the fact that we are um, a community that obviously shares public safety apparatus in the case of, you know, the Old, Old Mystic Fire Department um, and, and um, you know, our uh, ambulance service. There's, uh, we, we already have a symbiotic relationship. And so, I think any opportunity for collaboration we ought to consider, especially given um, the financial pressures all of our communities are facing right now and will continue to face in the years to come. Um, but, um, you know, I, I certainly will be supporting if a, a CIP um, this year to, to fund the bridge. Um, and I uh, commend really everyone for um, really having an honest and frank discussion because, as you know, um, um, Board member uh, Young has stated it. it, uh, it, it these aren't easy decisions, and it, it's not easy to approve. You know, uh, a, a a six a, you know six uh, six figure a dollar amount. Um, you know, to um, to make these investments. But again, I, I think they are necessary given the uh, public safety concerns that have been brought forth by by the chief. Um, and again, I, I thank you, um, Ms. Young, and, and uh, First Select Woman for, for your leadership in Stonington, and look forward to continuing to work together for the betterment of both of our communities. I just want to repeat kind of what you say, but I want to do it in a different way, which is that if you can solve 80% of the problem for 20% of the cost, to have an honest conversation about the problem here and the solution, that needs to be considered. And if if everyone has already considered all of those options, then fine, I stand corrected. I just don't think we have yet. Thank you. Councilor. I was just going to say um, on that, we, we can certainly follow up with our Board of Police Commissioners and with um, our contact at Connecticut DOT and Chief Richards and John, happy to keep you in on part of those dialogues, like Lynn said, just to be sure we're chasing down every possible angle. Um, and really quickly, Andre, just on a follow-up, like I um, mentioned at the start of the call, if you're going to sit on the SCARA board um, and you want to talk at all, um, we have um, a wonderful staff member who's been on the board for decades and is amazing. So if you want to chat at all before you join that board, we're happy to talk. I've, I've already beat you to the punch. I think you're talking about John. Yes. <laughs> yes, I actually reached out to him several years ago on uh, on composting, picking his oh. brain about uh, you know digesters and whatnot. So he, you're you're lucky to have him over in uh, in your neck of the woods. Very good. Well, I'm glad you'll be on there. Thank you. And sorry to interrupt. That's all right, Councilor Kasiri. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, Chief Richards. Just to clarify. Um, response times are a contributing issue to this bridge being out, correct? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, that was part of my question is, can you just give the public or counselors here who do not, you know, are not educated or aware of response times, if you could just give us a little bit of a synopsis of what four to six minutes can mean in a car accident or a medical emergency or a fire? Um, four to six minutes, a fire, a pretty you know, uh, rule of thumb, a fire will, will, will grow 100% like every one to two minutes. Um, car accident, depending on the injuries, heart attack, um, four minutes can be the difference between a, you know, a, a save or, or not a save with a cardiac arrest. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to be labored. You know, I don't want to use like response times as have people look at it as, as a, a strong arm or a scare tactic, but absolutely, I mean, minutes count, seconds count when it comes to uh, any kind of medical emergency or, or a fire or anything like that. 
Thank you very much. I think it's very obvious that I am in favor of uh, getting this bridge taken care of. Um, so I hope at the minimum that um, first black woman um, and board member uh, Young, that we can at least get your status update in the spring and summer as to where you are after your inventory. Thank you. Councilor Westervelt. Good evening, everyone. Uh, nice to see you, Chief Richards. Um, nice to see you. Just give you some information that you may or may not have the, or obviously don't. Um, the GTT Opticom system, they do have a new system which is run by GPS. So it solves those line of sight problems. Um, and I can't tonight, but tomorrow I can reach out to you with um, some information on that from the, I'm not, I don't represent them, but I do know the companies that do in this area and I can get that information for you. Thank you. Not a problem. Have a good night, everybody. Councilor Bordelon. Thank you. I, I can align my marks with uh, Mrs. Uh, Young uh, in regards to, you know, if we're if it's not going to be in this budget year, then we definitely do need to find um, ways to to look at fixing what we can at a lower cost until the bigger cost could be handled or if handled, depending on what decisions are made. The parking issue is on the Stonington side of the bridge and the lights are on the Stonington side of the bridge, which also involves the state. So maybe using some of our state officials that jointly represent some of those areas and some collaborations, um, since it's not going to happen in this budget year, unless there is another meeting where we collaborate and we figure out what those presents look like. But things that I heard today that I walked away with is access to that corner. Um, I, I, uh, Councilor Westervelt brought up um, some good, you know, probably technology advances that could be made. Um, but maybe um, Stonington needs to look at the zoning or something over there at the general store and figure out maybe that first parking lot space might not be one that you want to have at, directly at the right turn and maybe limit the parking maybe by one spot. Not saying you should, that's, that's not going to help the general store as far as getting people in. But if there is safety concerns, and I think it's fair to make these changes, as Councilor Bumgardner stated, these weren't issues that were in place when the bridge was up. So now we need to shift and have those conversations on how do we fix the problems that are occurring um, because the bridge is out. I'm in full support of obviously fixing the bridge as I brought up, but I think in the meantime, we should be proactive about fixing the problems that are occurring to decrease um, uh, those response times. So, uh, you know, looking at any of those ways and starting that discussion and collaboration, I think we should be coming back together more frequently, uh, maybe quarterly and discussing um, ways to, um, you know, enhance the infrastructure at that corner by decreasing a parking spot, lights, um, the timing of lights, as well as uh, talking to the state um, and letting them know we have a bridge that's out and um, we need help figuring out the light situation and having them come down to do a study. That at least says to me that we care about the constituents in the area and we're doing something proactively. Um, I think by putting that temporary hydrant, uh, uh, you know, collaboration was one of the greatest steps, but it, you know, here we are, this has been since 2010 and now we're at 2022 finally putting a temporary hydrant in. I think we need to move quicker on our responses to concerns of citizens in those areas when safety is at the front line. So the bridge is out, nobody knows who can afford it. Great, here's the problems addressed. 12 years later, let's fix the problems. And let's get the state. I mean, the state has not been contacted about traffic lights or the turn issue or the parking. So I think that is something from the, the, the town of Stonington who you know can talk to the general store. They might just be like, yeah, let's put some cones up, get rid of that, that, that spot. Let's look to way, ways that we can work on this together. And I, I appreciate Mrs. Young's, um, you know, you know, response to here's the number, but what can we do in the meantime to mediate? And that's what I'm looking to do. I want it fixed, but I also want to fix the problem. So I'm looking for any ways that we can come together collaboratively for the community, for the welfare and well-being, and use our state as our pilot. If the state really knows and they come down and do a study again and talk about the lights down there, that puts us back on the map to let them know that we need this bridge. And that's going to increase, increase awareness. So I'm, I'm all on board and I'd be willing to be part of a working group between Stonington and the town if, if there's such a thing where we might not do this work at the council meeting, but maybe there's two or three councilors and a few folks from the Stonington side along with Chief Richards where we meet quarterly 
and we start talking about these things and kind of keeping our ideas going. And when we have new developments, bring it back to the council. So I would encourage, if that's possible, John, is there any way that we can have quarterly, um, if, if Mrs. Um, you know, Selectwoman and Mrs. Young and Mr. Richards wanted that, I at least think that shows the community that we're not forgetting this and that we are meeting, you know, twice a year, quarterly, whatever, everybody, whatever anybody wants, but just to kind of keep that dialogue going and, 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 and seeing where we are. Is that a possibility? Sign me up, Counselor. <laughs> Is that yes. something? Yeah, I don't know who it would be from, our, you know, I don't get to make that decision, but, you know, speaking for myself, I'd certainly do it. Yeah, I would love to be a part of it. And I think, you know, I don't know if Chief Richards, would you be willing to be a part of the group? Right? Absolutely. And maybe a couple, couple people from the community, maybe someone from the general store. I think that's how we get, you know, a little bit more proactive and get a group together. And we, we, we go at it as a team and we just keep that dialogue open. So in the meantime, until we can fix it. So I, I think, at, I think at the end of the day, if we do something like that, um, it's showing that all parties involved are, are working and working diligently to make it a safer situation. I think it's a great idea. I think it's great. And then we and then we kind of have the information and we, we can present, uh, you know, as often as we'd like back to both councils um, meetings and say, hey, here's the working group that came about and here's the people involved in it. We take some citizens and then we can, you know, and then when we go to the state and do our ask, we have a group, we have documentation, we have photos, we have things that we can work towards and, and collaborate with. So we that's have just multiple representatives too. Absolutely. And there might be some money out there for something like this if we kind of come together as a team. And I, and I think we can because we have a great group. And I, I know it was brought up that in the past it was one town wanted and one. Unfortunately, the terms on the council in Groton are two, two years. And so I think there's a whole new group of vibrant, you know, very uh, you know, outgoing folks that are really, um, really ready to handle this. So there's a, definitely a strong interest. And um, I appreciate the collaboration. I'd love to work with you guys. I think it'd be fun. Thank you. Um, just to say, we're, we're happy to, and I'll follow up with John, he can liaise, um, but we'll we'll have to just bring in someone from our Board of Police Commissioners, because that's where the traffic authority lies for Stonington, but um, I'm happy to, to participate. I'm sure someone from the Board of Finance, like Lynn said, um, if it's not her, someone would, and um, we, we've been talking pretty regularly with Chief Richards about um, bridges <laughs> for two years, um, but um, I, I'm sure from the police commission again we've we've talked about this with our police commission um but we could bring it up um like you said to maybe have an on the ground kind of be down there really and look at it and maybe get someone from from dot to join us so um i, I think like we said you know, it was about 10 years maybe of, of stalemate um but now i think we by coming together have come up with some creative solutions so we might be able to again and um Obviously, I'm, I'm speaking a bit out of turn, but because you guys did bring it up, I, I do think if you could have a, a meeting with your residents and get an understanding of the appetite for whether it's using ARPA funds or um, or how much Groton would be willing to participate in um, and then come back to our Board of Finance, I think it, it warrants a, a discussion because I think no matter what, we're going to keep coming back to this issue that is a fiduciary duty question regarding Stonington taxpayers funding a bridge for Groton residents. And that's what came up when we started rehabbing this conversation. So again, I just in the spirit of full transparency, I think that's a conversation that at least needs to happen before we go to the full board of finance and talk about um, percentage of participation once we have our spring summer inventory done. So again, just in the spirit of pure, uh, complete honesty and transparency, I, I think even if that conversation doesn't come out well, it, it should happen um, just so we have all the data available for our board. Thank you. Councilor Kassiri. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for select women, I guess great minds think alike because my next suggestion was going to be to the town manager. Is there any way to have updates on what the ARPA funds can be used for and add that to the Greater Groton um, survey so that we can see if that would be something that residents would be interested in? Yeah, we're it, it certainly could. That study's just about wound down. <laughs> I mean, of course, we can apply for anything we want. Uh, you know, we can do whatever we want. You guys can do what you want with it. But let me look into it a little further. Okay, or even if we did something separate on the Greater Groton website and just see what the interest is, um, because Groton residents may feel differently when they find out what the safety issues are here. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Chief Richards? I think one of the things that I, I'd like to do, and I, I haven't done it in the past, and I apologize for that, but, but I think one of the things I'm going to start doing from today forward is when we do have a close call and we capture it on that dash cam on the truck, I think I'm going to download it and I'll send it to everybody. That way everybody can it kind of pictures worth a, a thousand words. So I haven't done that in the past, but I think I'm going to do that from now on. If we have a close call and we capture it, we will capture it on that dash cam. I think I'm going to, I'll, I'll forward it out. That way we have a record and we can say, Hey, look, here's eight incidents in the last six months where we've had close calls. I just, I, I apologize for not thinking about that earlier, but I, I think that's a good direction to go. And that way we have a record of it and everybody can see it. It's not just me sitting here at a meeting telling you about it. And Chief Richards, we, we should talk with um, Chief Stewart and Captain Olson on our side because that, that would be helpful. And there might be a way we can capture that more with more statistical relevance. Because when we, when we were first trying to, when we first took office and look at this and present to the Board of Finance, we did try and pull um, incident numbers from that intersection and there was almost nothing. So like that, that data point couldn't help us in the argument right for this, but if we had some way of capturing that, um, the visual, but also kind of to record, you know, there was four times the chief sent us, you know, a video cam of a close call um, that I think could help not just locally, but with the state. I agree. And, and before we end the discussion on, on all of this, it's not often I get a chance to have, be in front of both sides, Stonington and Groton. I just want to thank both sides for doing everything you can to help, to help us out. Um, we're really exploding. The Olmistic Fire District is exploding um, with um, infrastructure going on. We've got two huge projects getting ready to break ground on the Stonington side. Um, everybody knows, everybody's sitting on pins and needles what's going to happen on the Groton side with us, two minutes away from our headquarters fire station. So um, our call volume's going through the roof. Um, we got a lot of infrastructure going on within our fire district. So. I appreciate all the support we get from both Groton and Stonington because we're going through some trying times. Um, recruitment and retention for volunteers is getting tougher and tougher throughout the United States. And um, we're doing well. We got 16 new volunteers last year. We've got 14 of those 16 are still active with us, but it's getting harder and harder. And, and we're, we're in the process of, we're gonna be making some tough decisions here in the next couple of years in the Olmistic Fire District because of how quick we're growing. So I appreciate all the help we get from both sides and, and I'll keep you apprised, but we're really growing. <clears throat> we're starting to get a lot of stuff going on in our fire district, especially on the Stonington side. And Chief, and I, I don't want to say I speak for everybody, but I think I might when um, in the spirit of this collaboration, if there's things we can do on um, kind of the volunteer or recruitment or awareness raising front, um, please don't hesitate to ask. Cause you know, um, I know, um, you guys have already done some things all together um, with engaging the community and you're super active on social media, which is brave of you. And <laughs> um, but if there's things that we can do, or like Portia was mentioning, if we're getting together and brainstorming about the bridge, if there's things we can do on some of these other fronts, please don't hesitate to let us know. I will. And both sides, um, it's really important for you to know, we're very fortunate in this area. Um, I travel all over the country. I've, I'm on a lot of national committees um, and we have an outstanding mutual aid program in this area. Not every, not everybody throughout the United States has the type of mutual aid um, agreements that we have in this area. Um, just last week, that third alarm in East Lyme, um, Pequannock Bridge and Ole Mystic was there from, from the Groton side. So uh, we have a strong, a strong mutual aid system in this area, both in Stonington and Groton, it's really New London County. So we're very fortunate. And a lot of people don't understand how important that is because there isn't a single fire department in the area that can handle a major incident all on their own. We call mutual aid all the time and we depend on our mutual aid. So we're very, very fortunate in this area to have that kind of uh, mutual aid to be available all the time for each other. Thank you everybody for being here. Um, I'm excited we've got some good ideas on how to continue this discussion um, in a more efficient manner. Um, so thank you, Chief, uh, First Select Woman and uh, Board 
member Young for attending and I'm sure we'll be in contact. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. Having us. Good luck with the rest of your meeting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. All right, on to 2022-43 data center update. Here we have uh, Tom Quinn, uh, Chris Reagan, and George McLaughlin uh, to, to ask questions to. Mr. Burt, do you want to give an update? Yeah, do you want me to give a little bit of background on this for the public? Thank you. <laughs> sure. Um, back in, uh, well, in Public Act 21-1, the state passed uh, basically <clears throat> a tax exemption for data centers. However, what they did require is you have to have a host fee agreement in place, and basically like an in lieu of taxes agreement with the town um, that is required before anything could be built. Uh, um, we were approached, and then it's uh, based on 20 or 30 years, depending on the size of the investment. We were approached uh, by uh, what was known as Got Space at the time. They were looking at two different um, sets of parcels, one off 117 and one off Flanders. Uh, we did end up, uh, you got uh, the town council did end up approving an agreement for the uh, 117 properties. There's not one for the Flander Road. Um, and since that time, uh, some things have changed and Tom Quinn and his crew wanted to give an update and let you know what the latest is and talk about that Flanders Road properties. Um, oops. Would you like me to jump in now? Okay. Sure. Uh, Council, just one second. Council Borland, did you have something? Yeah, just a point of clarification before we roll right into it. Everyone that's joining that's part of this, part of this if they could just introduce themselves before the first person speaks and say what part of this they are a part of in this, it would be helpful just for my notes. All right. Um, Tom Quinn. I'm Tom Quinn. I'm the uh, the uh, manager of New England Edge, uh, Any Edge, and I'd like to uh, introduce a couple of other people that are on our team. One is George McLaughlin. You'll see that he doesn't have his uh, camera up yet, uh, but um, uh, and the other is uh, Chris Regan. Uh, you'll see him listed here. Here's Chris coming on, and uh, I don't think George is is on yet. Um, so we'll just double check that uh, in a moment. But those are the two from our team that are on tonight. Uh, and I have been trying to promote uh, George. It's uh, Zoom is not allowing me. It's ignoring me. I, I'll keep trying. It does this sometimes. He can he can speak. He's just I'm having trouble putting him on camera. And I've texted him too just to see if he's has has difficulty. So we'll see if he comes up with it. I don't see it yet. He may come in. It doesn't look like it's going to come in. He can speak, but I don't think he's going to be able to be on okay. camera without That'll logging off fine. and back in. That'll be fine. So I'd like to take just a few minutes and bring you up to speed. Up oh, here he comes in. I'm here. Can you Hopefully hear me? Yes, yeah, so we can hear you, George. The town manager is trying to get your picture in. Okay. You can hear me okay, though. We can hear you. Okay. Okay, so if you'd allow me just a few minutes, uh, 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 Town Manager Burt and uh, Mr. Mayor and the councilors. Um, so uh, as uh, the Town Manager told you, uh, our team was instrumental in getting the data sent uh, sent uh, in passed up in, uh, up in Hartford by the legislature with a 91% uh, of the vote in the House and 80% in the Senate. I have a number of updates to talk to you about, um, and we appreciate you taking the time to do this. I'll try to be as brief as possible. Um, and so I made some notes so we don't get uh, off track or down any rabbit holes. So um, uh, we were we were tasked with uh, not only uh, working for a couple of years to get the data tax uh, incentive uh, legislation approved, lobbied, and in, but also. Uh, we were tasked with working with each of the towns, and I came to Groton some long time before uh, the bill was eventually passed and let them know, as well as other towns, what the process was going to be uh, for this. I tried to keep everyone that we worked with uh, through the process fully informed 
Uh, and, uh, and I find it's always obviously the best course to keep everybody up to date, even during this lull time, which I'll describe. I have spent uh, some calls and some time with uh, John Burt and Paige Prompt uh, just to keep them up to speed as to what was moving forward. Um, the, um, <clears throat> we, we are looking to uh, advance a any edge uh, municipal fee hosting agreement. This is not a piece of land that was covered by any other hosting fee agreement. Um, and, uh, and it is the land uh, on the south side of uh, Route 95, quick to uh, close to connected fiber. So uh, there have been some questions about why did we go a little bit dark for a few months? I'd like to uh, let you know how that worked and what happened. Uh, on my little note thing, simply described uh, last January, we took on a uh, we took on an investment partner that had a, a substantial balance sheet. We thought uh, we spoke to private equity lenders that lent money to this particular person, and we found out that uh, uh, there there were uh, there was an ability there to perform. Uh, I had uh, I was focused heavily on legislation at that point in January. It passed as you as you probably know and signed by the governor on March fifth. So I was up uh, working every single day, long days, uh, doing the uh, lobbying efforts and working with landowners and so forth. Uh, simply described um, the investor contracted to fund, uh, partially funded, uh, defaulted, uh, and uh, when we called the default, uh, attempted a hostile takeover. Uh, it's a, uh, you know, uh, there are many other companies, big name companies that have had these in startup mode. Uh, it was miserable, to be honest with you. It took a little time to straighten out. We have straightened out. We have our whole team with us. Uh, we're not part of any, uh, uh, any legal action uh, from, from that entity. And uh, we're ready completely to move forward. Now, during that period of time, uh, we didn't wait. We can we continue to work. We created document sets. Uh, we met with private equity players. I traveled to a number of places in the country, uh, and we've kept the ball rolling. And we're very interested in Groton. I understand <clears throat> a few nights ago, the economic development meeting. There was a particular person that got up and said, well, "Then I watched it." But the thing that cued me in the most was, "No one's interested in coming to Connecticut." Well, that person has not spoken to Advanced CT, Hartford Metro Alliance, DECD, or anybody else because they're knocking at the door and they're knocking heavy. Uh, we have a very interested JV partner at hyperscale level. They already have the plans for the site. They are already have the CAD plans for the site. They're working through a proposal and building design on this particular site. What we're hoping to do is request and eventually obtain this a municipal host fee agreement. I'd like to get into that for a minute or two in just a second, but, uh, and we'd like to be able to create the package. I'll tell you why and how these people are interested in coming. They don't want to start assembling 16 pieces of small pieces of land. They want somebody to come in, do the heavy work, get the electrical contracts in place, get the pad site approvals in place, get the host fee agreement in place, meet all the state qualifications, and then they'd be interested in coming in as a JV partner. So we've got a task that we're going to have to move forward on. A little more about uh, who's who and what's going on. Someone high up in the, in the, uh, uh, in the government uh, in Connecticut has just taken a job with a major hyperscaler. They are tasked with vetting uh, this whole arrangement, particularly Groton and a couple other towns, one in particular, and uh, they were just hired away from the state. This is someone with the advanced knowledge. Um, also, we are working with someone at Hartford Metro Alliance. This man individually brought Google to the state of Minnesota. His name is Gene Goddard. You can look him up. You can talk to him. Great guy. He works out of Minnesota right now, but he does work for Hartford Metro Alliance. If you don't know about Hartford Metro, easy to look up. It's a coalition currently of 108 companies, including large scale insurance companies, banks and so forth. And they advocate for business opportunities and bringing people into the state. Great group. This particular person I met three years ago, he's been a great mentor. Uh, they, they have been contacted. There are cross NDAs every which way you look in this business. Uh, but I can tell you, Connecticut will be on the map for data, that there are many companies. I know of a half a dozen now that are looking. I know that there are two deadly serious right now that are looking for a particular location. And one of those two we are working with for the Groton site. So, um, there is quite a bit of action and you're welcome to, uh, if you have any, any question about data coming to the state, you have to call up. Some people say, why isn't it happening fast enough? I don't understand that. Well, you have to realize how the data 
thing moves around the country. So Phoenix has been the last hotspot. So for the last few years, development has been on electrical infrastructure, design, pad site permitting, and so forth in Phoenix. And they just don't drop the ball in the 34th state in the country that happens to be rather centrally located in New England. They don't just drop the ball and say, yep, let's run over to Connecticut. What they do is they finish what they're doing and then they move their asset base, which is their siting council development people into the state, their electrical engineers into the state, and they vet a project once it's signed up. To get something signed up, it must be pad site permitted. That's why we're talking to you tonight. So here's our document set currently. Uh, and I'll give you some background from the other towns. I believe in fairness and parity all the time. I can tell you that the economics for each of the town are equal in the municipal host fee agreements, and I think you've already investigated and know that. I can tell you that it's very important for us to carry over language from some of the other towns, and I have done that. Uh, in fact, we went back uh, and offered a couple of the towns that were first people that signed under the old entity uh, uh, some, some additional benefits. In Groton, I took the uh, language for sound attenuation. There was a video that was circulated about sound attenuation from a data center from more than 15 years ago. I can't tell you that was before, you know, flip phone time and, and no Tesla's on the road. It was a, a data center backed up against a residential area out west. Of course, that's a problem. We don't intend to do any of that. So right now, there are, you know, different, different types of soundproofing, tier levels of soundproofing. Uh, there are quiet air conditioning systems. And uh, we are working with a company now uh, introduced by the same person at Hartford Metro Alliance. Because we have a cool climate, we don't need air conditioning 24 hours a day, 365 a year. We can use fan cooling, air is cooled and brought through the, through the building, it's cooled and temperature checked and brought through uh, the building. This is what's used in Minnesota uh, in the off season. So we've got a lot of benefits being in a cold climate. We don't need water uh, for heat, uh, for AC, and, and we can keep the buildings cool uh, in the winter naturally, uh, more naturally, I should say. So as part of the document set, I've sent over the exact Groton approved host fee agreement language and added all of the Wallingford sound attenuation that they spent a couple months going through. Now it's a different location here than is in Wallingford. There are two roads in Wallingford that circle an industrial area. There are homeowners there. They're looking for huge setbacks. In fact, some of the buildings are hundreds and hundreds of foot setback in a 50 setback zone, and we're still working to push them back further. We expect to work with them going forward on the zoning, and we do believe everything will come together in Wallingford. We believe that the town in their last proposal is working through this process. It's just been a longer process. On this particular case in Groton, we have a, um, a site that backs up to the highway, which is ideal for fast fiber, that's main trunk fiber in the highway. And we're fairly close enough to be able to bring the power in. So that, uh, that piece, that one piece of the document set's already turned over to the town, it's for review. It matches the Wallingford, Wallingford's online. You can match it all up yourself if you like, but it's, we, we want the parity uh, amongst all the towns. The second piece of paperwork we have is we've brought a, together a coalition a partnership uh, of sorts um, that we're, we have committed to an operator to uh, a, a nationally highly ranked top three operator in the country to come in with us to the first two data centers. Um, that company is located in Atlanta. There are NDAs I'd rather not to get into in the public forum. I could talk to the town manager about it. I need to get permission from the company to talk about it. But that company uh, is uh, has sent us contracts and, and we are prepped for Groton with them. We are also dealing with the largest data builder in the world. They happen to have an office in Sheldon, Connecticut. Their primary offices are in Hudson Avenue, New York, where I've been a few times. And they are uh, have been working with us as pre-construction advisors. Uh, for the last few years. Uh, they are highly marked. Uh, they they uh, are ramping up at this time to build data centers in Connecticut. Uh, we have a standing call once a week with this company uh, and they will likely uh, be contracted. Um, I was contacted today by uh, the um, uh, labor unions in Connecticut to update our project labor agreements, uh, which we'll be doing with our attorney tomorrow morning. So those project labor agreements will all be in place. 
by probably the end of the day uh, tomorrow. Uh, the next piece of uh, documentation uh, that we have is, um, and, and we do have, by the way, a contract ready to sign from the construction entity, working with the operating entity. Uh, we also have about 60% of the engineering on this particular site complete, and the seller of the property, uh, who you probably know well, a developer and a marine owner and so forth in the area, uh, has met with us personally, of course, and um, uh, has uh, cooperated and, and allowed us the time that we need and effort that we need to be able to get this uh, done as expeditiously, expeditiously as possible. As part of it, and I was trying to, my, my son, who is my IT guy, I'm a little bit older now, uh, I was trying to put this up on the screen to show you, I won't be able to do it at this time, but uh, the town manager has it. Uh, and we proposed uh, to um, carve off uh, about 35 acres, but that 35 acres may be closer to 40 once we establish an electrical easement. And that uh, that acreage, we'd like to swap with the 17 acre piece the town has with any offset costs that's involved would be, you know, we'll be prepared to pay. But that's part of, uh, of, of putting this package together. We can do it without this swap. It's not a problem. We could still build it, but we'd like to have it. And we think it works better for everybody. Um, once once we look at the package, um, but we are open to that. We've gotten some uh, um, uh, some basic appraisal letters, but it's going to need, need to be uh, appraised and have cooperation of the town for this particular location. Um, and uh, it would work within the setback area, for example, and so forth. So I think it would be a, an ideal uh, an ideal uh, package for the town. Um, so we have about 60% of the work done there. We'd be prepared very soon to come into inland waterways. Uh, we have um, the conservation work uh, done. There's been a survey. There's been a phase one on the property. So we're, we're, we're fairly certain, although we don't have all the paperwork back, the physical work has been done. Uh, we expect it back fairly shortly. We would say the next uh, 30 to 60 days and we'd like to be able to apply. Um, so uh, with that, uh, we're open for questions, um, and I'd like to introduce uh, yeah, introduce Chris Regan, but George McLaughlin uh, is uh, is on our team now, uh, a partner, mm -hmm. and uh, George is also an attorney in the state of Massachusetts, um, and um, uh, has been great to work with in helping us uh, pull this together quickly and get everything rolling uh, <clears throat> in this town. So Tom, I'll for questions. I was able to pull up that map, Tom, if you want me to pull it up on screen. Fine, if you'd like to, sure. sure. Now, this is, if, if you could, could everyone see this? Um, yes. the, uh, <laughs> the green is, the town owns this green parcel right here. The yellow is the DOT. This is the larger, you know, what they're looking at. This is now, ten, you know, rough, uh, rough, like he said, but the tentative piece to uh, donate. Sure. I just like to just to, uh, offer this. It's uh, we don't have the exact lot line yet. We're willing to donate as much of the land that we don't need. And we expect with this swap, we'll be able to uh, donate probably about that much land less the utility easement. And we don't have that back. Uh, what, what the last document we need uh, to be uh, very effective is we need the, um, and we, we've already put the interconnection plans together and Eversource has them now and so does, um, so does uh, Groton Utilities. Um, I'm told as of today uh, that uh, we should have one of those two entities back by February 15th and the other definitely before the end of the month. And these are infrastructure, uh, you know, contracts for costs to, to do this work. So uh, once we have that, uh, we will um, uh, initialize that with the payment, and we will. Uh, and they'll they'll be uh, tasked to, uh, you know, to do that to do that job. Thank you for that presentation, uh, Councilor Jones. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Quinn, for your your presentation. So some of my questions: um, Do you currently own this land on Flanders? No, the land's under contract for a period of up to nine months with extensions if we need it for appeal periods. 
do you on the there was an existing agreement with um with uh with gut space is that agreement being canceled or what has happened there's to that? not an agreement with gut space on that parcel of land i think the town manager can so elaborate. we have an existing agreement with them. You were a partner in that company at the time. Is that correct? You don't have an agreement on this piece of land with Godspace. I know that, but I'm trying to say is that you were a partner in a previous agreement with the town. Is that correct? That's right. And do you know where the, is there any status on that particular agreement? Has it been canceled uh, or is it? I think George can can speak to our, our plan here, but um, uh, the status on that agreement, uh, I just I, I gave you the 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 rundown of how this thing worked with the hostile takeover, uh, because things were done without my knowledge or consent. People can do what they want to do, and then the consequences come later. So you are so, no longer part of that agreement. No, I'm no longer part, part of that agreement. operation whatsoever. Okay, so Paper, if I understand papered out completely of the operation. Okay. In total, yeah. So if I understand the way you're describing this, you're basically acting as a sort of a broker for companies that are coming in building data centers. Is that right? You're not you No, I've worked for four them. years of my life on this project, and we are going to be JV partners, joint venture partners in anything we do in the state. Okay. So, so we remain in for the length of time, whether it's 20 or 30 years. We provide all the development end of this operation, and we will participate in the entire process by bringing in the builders, the, the you know, we're basically the project management end of this arm until something else changes. Now, we are talking to a company that is uh, interested in a, in a very large building. Um, the building is, um, is is being vetted by our construction piece now and our and our engineer to see if we can actually fit what we need on this site. We believe we can. All indications are now that we can, and then we'd have to ramp up the utility over the next two years. Do you have a, of a sense of what tier level the new the new uh, this building would be? What tier level? Right. Tier four it would be tier a four. tier four level. So you know about data centers. That's good. A little bit. Um, Okay, so yeah, it would be a tier four uh, 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 deal. It would be a hyperscale for a major top five player in the game. And it would be, um, you know, we would have tier four generators. Uh, we'd uh, Tier two for backup, standby would be tier two backup. Um, uh, we would have use, using electric as primary generation from Buddington, obviously, and the backup would be a diesel generator. Uh, diesel generation, um, probably Kohler or one of the other top brands, but it looks like Kohler now is the most efficient at tier four. And do you have a sense when you say very, very large, are you talking two football fields, three football fields? Is it something? Uh, it's hard to say because they build these buildings in different shapes for different companies. And when I was out in, uh, in Silicon Valley, I happened to meet the chief engineer for Oracle and I got an education. I was very lucky to be able to talk to him for 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, you know, basically what happens is uh, they have a very proprietary layout for the building. So it's hard to answer your question. Uh, the footprint could be up to 500,000 square feet. It could be 250 or 260. It depends on what they wanna do and it depends on the space that we have to do it. Okay. And in your team, you hear you have, uh, so Tom, I guess I'm sort of seeing as you as the CEO and George is the, um, Chief. George is one of our investment partners and he's an attorney in, in another state, but we know each other from the other state. By the way, so you all know, I went to high school and junior high in East Lyme. My father worked in Stonington at the end of when the old musket factory in the brick building when Monsanto had it. Um, I had friends in Mystic and Groton and so forth. And uh, I was involved in, you know, all kinds of programs. I, I played horn in, in Connecticut College when I was a kid because the you know, they they didn't have what I played, so they invited me over. So I, I have a I have a history in that area. And, uh, and I just happen to live away and, from the area. And Mr. Now. Regan's role in this project, how is how is he? Uh, Chris has been well. I met Chris uh, at the very beginning, way before we had legislation, and um, I met him uh, over at uh, Old Mystic Village, and we had a chat 
uh, about another piece of property. And Chris and I became friends and he helped me through the process. Uh, knew a lot of landowners, is connected in many ways to some of the people that we're doing business with. Uh, he's been great and we've uh, kindled a pretty nice friendship. Uh, we just traveled together to meet two of our other consultants. Thankfully, it was down south. Uh, we have our, our primary electric consultant is a guy that travels all over the country and does this. His name is um, Michael Bedley, a uh, well-known guy in the industry. Uh, and then we have a business development person named Eric Salzinger. He's in Coconut Grove, Bedley's down in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, the group is really spread out, mostly East Coast, but uh, the group is spread out and we have others that and do different just, things. Uh, one final question at this point, if we were looking you up online, under, are you under any edge or New England edge or what? Any edge, yep. Yeah. We, we just put all that together for this particular, um, for this particular host fee agreement. Uh, and we may we may have another name for the next site, but for this host fee agreement, it's any edge. Okay, all right. And I think the town is doing a know your client on me, and I'm happy to I provided them with all the information, so they have everything. Okay, all right, great. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Thank you so much, Councilor Baumgartner. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, uh, before uh, just um, when I'm questioning them. John, would it be possible if you could email the, the map that you uh, put on the screen, send sure. it to the counselors? Sure. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Quinn, uh, Mr. Regan, Mr. McLaughlin, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I know it's been a little while since we uh, last spoke and um, since the council approved uh, the host agreement uh, last year um, in the uh, early spring, uh, late winter, if you will. Um, as soon as John sort of resends that map, um, just a quick question about the proposed land swap. Um, so as John had mentioned, the agreement uh, covered just uh, 117 and with this agreement would, um, should we approve the uh, new host agreement, it would um, you know, uh, involve Agra in engaging in a land swap uh, with, um, uh, with uh, what, group in particular obviously would um it would be god space but with a um a new management team they're saying no it's not god space at all that's an entity that's now gone no, i'm sorry new, we're concerned. New, ener um, uh, new energy right and and it's not subject to the land swap we we can we can build this without the land swap it's just a we can get a more rectangular building with better access, we can stay further away from the vernal pool that's on the property, which is nice. We don't have to cross the stream, you know, those type of things. We can do this clean with with a land swap. Otherwise, we still don't have to cross the stream. We just have to split. Sorry, we have to split the. We have to change the footprint of the building, which could change because of its size. It'd be a little bit smaller, and we'd have to maybe split the building into two. Uh, to be able to get it far enough away. We want to be far enough away from any possible water source there. Uh, and to do that, we may have to split the building up. So we have a better chance at bringing the people that we're talking to if this land swap is possible to do. And we would close on the land swap when we closed on the land. Uh, and we would pay the offset difference of whatever the town appraisal was based on whatever the town thought the land we were uh, contributing would be whatever's fair, but I, you know, the parity is fine with us. We're, we're okay with all that. Now, now, Mr. Burke, can you speak to that property? Uh, you know, I, uh, for folks who may not be particular with that particular parcel, and thank you, John, for sending the map to Scott, it, um, to uh, describe, you know, what, what, what is on the parcel, obviously it's undeveloped and it, you know, forested, but, um, you know, just quickly speak to that. <laughs> And that's essentially what it is. There's there's nothing uh, actually there. In terms of zoning, though, we do have uh, Deb Jones if she wants to fill in a little more about what could be there, what could be done there. Sure. And by the way, uh, and just to mention, I have sent I, a few days ago. I sent this map to uh, GCA Groton Conservation Advocates. Just I wanted their opinion on what the uh, what they thought of that swap piece, and uh, I haven't heard back from them yet, though. So. Definitely, if we if we can include this map in the meeting minutes, that way there, there's just a record within, um, you know, our our um, our vote, if you will. 
Um, but just looking at the map and, and also looking at the electric uh, distribution, uh, I'm sorry, the ele ele electric district maps, it, it appears to me that without the swamp, uh, you would be unable to get energy fed in from Groton Utilities, in large part because of the proposed parcel that would be swapped with the town. Uh, just a tiny sliver of it falls in the Groton Utility Service Area. Uh, and that's, I, I imagine, where that, um, that feed-in would come in. There's actually a couple options. We have sent the utility company interconnections at a, over a couple of different pathways. I don't do that. The engineers do that. And I can tell you that there are a couple of pathways. And I believe, you know, without getting into any weeds here, and we shouldn't in this until we hear from the electric company, but uh, there is going to be some uh, underground, uh, uh, you know, service uh, applied and some over uh, over service, uh, overland service uh, on sticks and wires and so forth. But the uh, but they intend to feed some of this underground, especially the first probably the first we'll call it phase of the building, which is let's say half of the building uh, that might be able to be fed like that. You can't put one fifteen underground; it melts the conduit. But you can put thirty seven five and so forth underground. And and that and that would again come in uh, in from uh, Hazelnut. I'm sorry, Hazelnut Hill Road. That, well, it could. We have, uh, we are, we have proposed uh, a couple of pathways, and um, I can give you a when it, when the electric company gets back to me, I'd be happy to share that with you. Uh, but they're going to vet a couple of the pathways that are there. It can come under road. It can come under highway. It can go a number of ways. Go right under the highway. So we have to, you know, we're going to know better when we get their their report back, and we'll do whatever they need to do. Uh, the engineers, uh, we're going to be paying those engineers to um, to give us these uh, these reports, which may take 30 to 60 days. Our goal is to try to get the first major center in here. And people say, why do you say that? And why Groton over somewhere else? Well, if you take your protractor that they gave us, in, I don't know, third grade, and you swing it from Groton, within 200 miles, you hit one tenth of the United States population. I don't know what that, you know, if you understand, uh, and, uh, not you personally, but if you generally understand the concept, but we have no connectivity in the Northeast, and this is a very valuable piece, and we believe with this connectivity at this site, uh, this is going to make, uh, it, it's going to make a big difference uh, at this site. So we'll find, we'll get the utility in there uh, one way or another. There's a few ways to do it, um, and the cost changes, uh, the cost changes dramatically on some of these, but the cost to bring the utility the mile or so that it is from Buddington over uh, is is uh, is is going to be a cost that's going to have to be borne to build a data center of this caliber. Uh, and I, I know others have uh, a few other questions, and I I, I do as well. Um, but just one more um, before relinquishing the floor. Um, you know, uh, we've we've gotten a plethora of emails from folks just with with concerns. I, I think with any. A major development, you know, you're you're bound to get uh, concerns from concerned citizens and um, regarding the environmental impacts and whatnot. So, you know, what what assurances can you give, particularly to say the conservation community, that um, you know, as you're citing this the campus data campus um, and you know, considering the the um, the carbon footprint and uh, the ability to you know create sort of a, as a, a green of a campus, if you will, um, or, uh, you know, as, as possible. So um, in a building a campus that would be, uh, you know, at least the uh, not wouldn't have as, um, you know, a, a negative, a long term negative environmental impact to, you know, obviously the land, um, you know, what assurances can you give that you are um, in good faith keeping keeping those concerns um, first and foremost as you're finalizing developing these plans. Okay, I gave a small booklet to DEEP and I can make, a, I think I have a copy of it somewhere, I'll give it to the town manager, but uh, each of these companies and particularly the company we're dealing with, but I have all the companies have their own renewable programs that are pretty aggressive. Um, most are carbon negative, some are carbon neutral. Microsoft wants to go all the way back to 1975, if you can believe that one, and, and be carbon neutral. Uh, so they all have plans. They are on top of, uh, the, their boards are on top of uh, bringing uh, the cleanest possible data center in. This will be a data center 
that is electrically serviced, okay? It will have backup diesel generators at the most efficient level, which are tier four. Tier four generators will run a number of hours a year, but last summer, they would have run approximately 12 hours for the entire summer. The, um, the, we just had a storm. Uh, during that storm period, we'd have to run to be, if we were out of electricity, you know, for, we'd have to, we'd have to be able to run it. So there are, this isn't going to be a primary generated plant. This is a primary electrical plant with very efficient cooling, uh, and air, and air cooled. That's a big, that's a big part of the efficiency, you know, is, is the air conditioning systems, um, less than the, uh, less than the, um, uh, less impact than the diesel on both sound and, and emission. So the air conditionings are very important to have those systems up. Uh, I will tell you that we don't intend to clear any more land than we need for this. It's just not useful to do it. The parking is minimal around a data center. There will probably, you get different numbers from different people. The company that we're talking to at this size could have a hundred cars or so, or so over three shifts. So you're only talking about an average of 30 cars a shift, inconsequential. We don't need a whole lot of parking. Um, there will be an impervious pad, or a pervious pad that has, you know, with the, uh, the blocks that have grass growing through them and so forth, that'll probably be a half an acre so that when they switch out servers, they have a place to put the trucks. This is a model that these companies use across the country. Um, the, uh, there was some comments the other night about underground diesel storage. There is no such thing as underground diesel storage. Absolutely not. It's not done. I suggest you, you, you might want to look if you have time, Google, Facebook, New Albany, Ohio, and just take a look at some of the videos there. You have everyone from the governor down to the local mayor to the economic director of the town, all quoted in this video. And it shows you how these things are built. So there's basically a, the, 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 any diesel storage is above ground and it's within what's called a gunite, you know, it's like a gunite pool. Um, so everything, including the generators themselves and the diesel are all self-contained in, in, in this one place it can't get out. Um, we're going to use town water and town sewer. They're going to need some extensions for those uh, items there. Uh, very little water uh, comparatively is used. In the South, they, they use water and they use a lot of water. We're not using water, we're going to air cool. Uh, the sewage is, you know, minor uh, with, the, with that many people working uh, in, that, in that particular building. Um, as far as, uh, uh, as Future Green, we'll be using you know, the most efficient systems that are available on the market today uh, to, to do that. And the state really takes care of the rest. Uh, we'll see how the, uh, you know, the wind farm plays out and so forth. Uh, we do not intend to clear any acreage for solar. Data centers draw uh, too much power. It's, the solar, is, um, solar isn't going to help the, the cause too much, although some data center operators put in uh, solar is window dressing. We're not going to do any of that. We're going to leave it to the electrical company uh, to bring the power in. Uh, we expect a building that at two stories is 55 feet. That's probably the cap that we're going to use at 55 feet. If anyone requests more, we'll talk about it. But right now, data center operators used to only do one. Now they're talking about doing two story buildings. It consolidates the footprint a little bit. If we can consolidate the footprint, we have less land that we need to disturb uh, on the site. Um, there, will, there will be a disturbed period during construction, and, and then it'll cool down to a very clean site. You can Google these sites. I, I suggest you look at New Albany or Phoenix. Phoenix, you'll see construction online, and New Albany, you'll see finished data centers online. A little long answer there, sorry. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Bordelon? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming out tonight and um, re-updating us on this. Um, my first question is, um, Mr. Regan, um, you are the realtor for Mr. Quinn, or how? What's the? I know that you say you help him, but what is the direct uh, con connection for that? Find the location, so I do site selections with the uh, with our group. All right. So you have a financial investment in this as well. So you have a stake. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to go because I know that, you know, you're also a landowner here in the town of Groton and you own, you know, commercial properties. 
Okay. Uh, so I'm just trying to piece together the the impact and you know looking at it um, and looking at the greater good of Groton ultimately. So I know it was said here today by Mr. Quinn that you know it's the perfect spot, but it it might be the perfect spot for you and your company. But is it the right spot for the community and the constituents' well-being in the town? Just because something's perfect for one does not mean it's perfect for all. That's fair to say. So looking through the, the investor's eyes, it's perfect for you. But my goal here is to make sure it's perfect for Groton, perfect for the town of Groton, perfect for the constituents and the community that I love, perfect for the future generations, my water supply that I drink every day. I looked back and I apologize, I'm scanning between a couple of things here. I remember the March 30th committee, the whole meeting. And at that meeting, um, I suggested that the town consider um, incorporating health, and you can go back and watch these videos, March 30th, um, health and environmental safeguards directly into the Groton's host municipality fee agreement, which would have been a, you know, a good idea since the state data center law public act 21-1 gives each municipality broad latitude. So it gives us the chance to add some of our own language in there to put its own public health environmental safety measures into our contracts. In response to my comment at the time, town manager Burt indicated that the state legislators were, uh, was expected to pass additional legislation to incorporate environmental um, protections into the public act 21-1, which should be you know, a significant protection and making sure each town has a stake as we stated, Perfect for you, but what's perfect for me and my family and my community? At that time, um, Mr. Burt stated that he would provide an update. So I guess this would be a perfect time to update. Mr. Burt, do we have an update or do you guys have that in? Um, have we had any more state involvement or information on Act 21 1? I have not. I can, and I thought to John oh, Burt, the but, town manager, first, please. I have not, but they're probably okay. better positioned to answer. Right, um, but I'm. But when if you go back and watch the video, it states that you would be you get updates. So I haven't heard that update. Yeah, and I haven't I received an update. Feel, no, okay. So that's first red flag for me. And once again, for full record, I support data centers. Um, but what I do not. I have an update. Is, I'm going to finish my comment. Here, I'll take your comment in a minute. I want to finish my my spiel, but you can update me if you'd like. Sure. Um, it's important to me, but that update was not given, right? I'm asking for the update date, but it wasn't forthcoming. So when I look at things and processes, I look for forthcoming information that's up front. Environmental should be the front of the line. Long term, this data center, as how many, how, for, first question, how many companies has this been under so far that you've been a part of? One. And that's just, okay. And then other thing, can you speak to Basra, Wallingford, Griswold, and all of those judgments and fees that are currently being owned, you know, owed? All I don't around know what us. you mean by fees. Um, there's judgments that are pending with looks like legal actions and suits. Okay. I think I just told you what happened. We had an investor that came in and then tried to take over the company. Okay. Right, I understand that. That, so, that has nothing to do with us. We're not involved in any of that at all. But I'd fine. like to get back to your update question. Let me I was finish. Never... I'll, I'm going to give you all my questions and you can answer me because I just, I'm rolling here. I got a whole bunch of take notes, some notes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Fair enough. Just like you gave your presentation, I'm just rolling my stuff out because I'm speaking on half of my community that it's really important to me. So um, in here, it's, it, um, you know, so I have questions about that. So with that, I have concerns with our agreement not being as strong as we've seen in other developments in our town. So with that, I, I think this needs to be fully looked at, fully vetted properly. And as names change, we need to relook at contracts. And I think those safeguards should be in our contracts for our town RFP developments and development agreements. Also, I think it is also important to look at the fact that, um, you know, if the name keeps changing over time, that draws red flags to me I'm looking at ways to look at business and opportunities. People keep talking about the dollar impact for the town. I look at it from a broader picture. How many data centers have you completed? Zero. All right. So you speak of what, how great this will be and um, how these different initiatives and sending us to all these links outside of our state, 
with all due respect for me, that doesn't tell me how we're going to fare here in the town of Rotten. Um, so these are concerns. I think it's hard to speak from something if I can't see completion by the by the by the the, the spearheader of it and a bunch of other folks that were part of the process that have not made it to the very end, let it be legal action, money judgments, people leaving. To me, that draws concerns. And so also nobody's updated on the environmental thing. So, you know, you come back and update, but the environmental stuff was never addressed. The amount of acreage of trees, when I look at development, once again, I'm for data centers, depending on where they're located in its entirety, the investor, the impact on the climate in the area, as well as the town's investment in, in you know, the, the, the need. Um, I don't want Groton to be used because we're, we're a main hub on a main direct line. That's great, but that doesn't make it the best option for the town of Rod. So my concern is no environmental impact clause. We did not update that per our last meeting to see what that is. And because that didn't happen, um, I'm having trouble supporting these initiatives and it seems to be a little all over. When you came the last time, you were really proactive. Oh, you got to see Griswold, Mottville signed on. And now they're no longer on. Is that correct? We're in process now, and we expect yeah. them to be fully on board. Right. So as of right now, they're not on. Is that correct? That's correct as of right okay. now. Okay. But correct. watch because so, it will so be it soon. Keeps, right. So it keeps changing. And with that, I stand united with some of them and some of those decisions. And I do think that this needs to be relooked at. We just got the map tonight. It was sent, as Mr. Burke stated, to G, uh, the conservation advocates first. But, you know, um, I, I don't feel comfortable swapping any land. And when I look at land, this is certain sections undeveloped. And so to, to level trees and then resurrect a tier, what you call it a four, level four, uh, you know, building on this property, um, I just don't think it properly suits the area in its entirety. I think your vision and plan is wonderful. I have not seen you complete a project. In fact, I've seen agreements start, stop, come, go, and that just doesn't sit well with me. And um, and if I'm going to make a decision to put my name behind it, it has to be something that's got some some backing, some vetting, some structure. Um, and I just don't feel very comfortable with it, to be honest with you. And it's nothing personally. It's strictly process, transparency, liability, and 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 the financial cost that it can create to the town. So I'll give you the floor to ask if you have any questions on that, but I know you're going to say that this person, we can say that, but the point is, is I have to look at the track record presented in front of me and it has not been, um, and I've been watching it very closely. It has not been to it's the, the level of rigor that I, I anticipated. I understand it's a great state initiative that came down. Um, I, I would like to hold fast on this and wait to see all these great uh, contracts that you're bringing on. I'd like to see one of them develop. And then see how great in the impact is before making a decision. But I don't think Town of Broughton should be the forerunners on that and take the liability and the risk um, on hand. Um, and I would like to know more about that 21-1 and the environmental thing. I think we're not protected here from environmental. And the long-term fallout when you pick up and leave after, where does that leave the Town of Broughton? So that's where I'm at. I, I need more information and I don't feel properly informed willing to make any decisions or you know, discussions because certain things have not come forward. I know that Mr. Reagan had reached out to me in a phone call and wanted to you know, update me on some stuff regarding this. Uh, but I, I think it's just really important to look at all avenues. And I think there's some areas here that are just a little bit not answered yet. And, and just to mention, also. once Mr. Quinn replies, Deb Jones can take us through the legal process uh, yeah, there are steps that would address some of these um, questions, but she can add on after Mr. Quinn. Perfect. Okay, so let's address the environmental and your update that you'd like to have from last year. The state has a set of regulations and the EPA has a set of regulations. Those are the regulations. So to further familiarize yourself with that, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but it can be done. The uh, environmental impact related to trees that you brought up, data centers are gonna be the least impactful of any industrial use. It's a footprint and a small parking lot. The rest stays natural. 
Um, there has to be a first company that does this. I've spent four years of my life from the start till now to bring this thing through, and we've been very successful. We ran into a little glitch. It's a startup company. Everyone has had a glitch. I've never had one in business till now, but I've had this one. And now we're ready to move forward and get this thing finished. The, um, the red flag uh, name change, that's part of changing what we're doing. We're not involved in any lawsuits of any kind, uh, and we haven't been. We're the ones that are riding this thing through and getting it done. Groton can decide whether or not they want us there with a simple vote from the town council. So we are requesting a vote, not one in three months, but soon. At your next meeting, you're available to vote in. And if you don't want us at this particular site, we'll know it then. And then we can do what we need to do. But we have spent an awful lot of time and money getting to this point in Groton. And we have 60% of the work done on this particular site. It abuts the highway. It is an industrial zone. It's high and dry enough. The swap makes sense because it allows both parties to benefit. And if you don't like the swap for any reason, the town decides they don't want to do it, we'll plan around it without the swap. And we can just build the building on, in back of that swap area and further south of that. Uh, the, um, the environmental. So let me get into the environmental for a minute. We were the first bill approved with a 91% vote in the House and 80% in the Senate. But there was a representative at the 11th and a half hour on the last day of the legislature that tried to kill the bill by putting in environmental measures that wouldn't allow a data center to operate in the state, period. They wouldn't, you couldn't do it. You need backup. And that was put in at the 11th hour. Now, prior to that, I had put in writing to both the deep director and to the DECD director that we would agree to a number of things that they proposed. And that is tier two diesels for strict backup separately permitted and then tier four diesels, which is the most efficient you can possibly get for the in the marketplace now for peak shaving benefit. And we also agreed to do only 75% of otherwise allowable peak shaving to cut it back even further. But as bills happen up in the legislature, they added layers and layers and layers of extra things. And it was brought up by Matt Ritter, speaker, and it was shot down at the 11th and a half hour. Now, Rep Machinsky online posted a letter that I wrote to her that said, I agree to all of those things. It's on Google. You can Google it or you can ask her for it. I don't have it handy. And we agree to all of those things. Those things can go into this agreement tomorrow morning, not in a month or two months from now when we no longer you know, can, can make our deadlines but I can get it to the town manager tomorrow morning and that can be incorporated in the agreement because I will tell you, counselor, that this is an industry standard. They don't bring in big, dirty diesel peaking engines like many of the towns have. They bring in efficient, fully contained in a box, quiet generators these days. That's what they're building. These generators are quite expensive and you need a few of them on the site. So we agreed to these environmental measures, not because we thought we should, it's because the marketplace already does this. They already have these generators in place at this tier level. No one's looking to do anything less than use the very best equipment and only the very best equipment will be used. Now, we have someone in another town that would like to do a field trip. New Albany, Ohio is a great place. Dallas, Austin, Phoenix, you can go any of these places. You can stand next to these data centers, not too close because there's security and you can get a feel for what these are all about. Um, these are best use for an industrial piece. They don't produce grease and sludge and they don't have manufacturing on it. There isn't any metal runoff in the area. None of that. It's all fully contained and would be otherwise looking like a big gunite pool, all of it. And these are probably the most serviced 
of any type of a company, most most uh, maintenance being done on in any of this, uh, any of the equipment in these buildings of any other type of co company. And right now, worldwide, it's the number one asset class worldwide. So if Groton doesn't have interest in this project, we just need to figure that out sooner than later. And I understand. But we have a world-class builder. We have a top of the top in the country operator, and we have hyperscale interest in the town of Groton. It's not, can't be denied. And I filled in the town manager about this. I have NDAs. I've gone as far as I can tell you what we have, but that's what we have now. I'm trying to place these people in a JV environment with us, and I'm trying to get this done as quickly as possible. I can tell you that the, the, that the state, if you take the time to call Advanced CT, you take the time to call uh, uh, Hartford Metro Alliance and you do some homework, you're gonna find out that there are people really looking into the state and they are gonna end up in one of these, uh, the, there will be a data center in each of the towns we've discussed. There is no question about that. It's just a question of timing and if the, if the town will approve uh, the, uh, the host fee agreements. And we've added, already added all the sound attenuation you didn't mention that, but we added all that from Wallingford, and they spent a lot of money on sound consultants. This is not surrounded by houses. If you look at the map down there in the map here, it's completely a different thing. This is an industrial piece that backs to 95 with the buildings close to 95. So we have no problem with the sound attenuation piece, and uh, we have no problem with um, the utility piece, and we have no problem from a developer side uh, with um, uh, with satisfying all the state and federal requirements because we've already had those vetted. So I hope that answers some of your question. Uh, I understand what you're looking for. We have agreed with Rep Machinsky on any of this. You're welcome to talk to her about it. She has my emails. And this is going to be done not at the town level, but at the state level because it involves state regulations and it's enforceable at those levels. So that's why you haven't gotten the update in Groton because the state's handling it states on it up to this point. And I've agreed in writing to these things already. So uh, my follow-up to that, John, do we have the, what environmental safeguards have we put into our agreement that we were allowed to from a town perspective? Well, remember, first I was, Deb Jones is gonna go through the process. Yeah. Thanks, John. Um, so I, I can run you through the land use process here. Um, as noted, this is an industrial zone. IM, which is a mixed use industrial zone. Um, a portion of the property is also overlaid by the Water Resource Protection District. Um, that is the portion of the property that's close to the reservoir and drains to the reservoir. Um, without seeing detailed site plans, this certainly is going to need some kind of inland wetland agency permitting. And it is also going to need site plan approval from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, the wetland agency will look at the impact of the work on the inland wetlands. That's, that's the only thing they can look at. What impact will this have on the inland wetlands on site and off site? The Planning and Zoning Commission will look to the zoning regulations, which include the Water Resource Protection District regulations, um, and be sure that it meets all of those. Um, the Water Resource Protection District regulations have very, very strict stormwater regulation, hazardous material requirements, um, as well as um, uh, requirements for non-disturbance areas. Um, th those are, without looking at detailed site plans, those are the, the, the things that I see will be reviewed and approved by the town. So I guess my question, we haven't put anything in there as of yet. In the in the section that the state allows us to add in our own environmental protections that pertain, you know, as our need to our town, we have not put anything in there as of, as of today. You're asking me that question? It's I was the asking same. either Deb, Deb Jones oh, Deb. or John or somebody from the town side. So the section that is uh, the public, the Act 21-1 gives each municipality the broad latitude to put its own public health and environmental safety measures into the host agreement. What has Groton done in our host agreement? Well, the, you know, the things that the council requested as a whole last time, and that's where we're at now with the noise uh, part mm -hmm. added on. Um, 
I myself, from what we talked about last time, I don't feel like an environmental expert. I would need someone outside to guide if we're going to add anything else. I would not feel comfortable doing that myself. And I don't yeah. want to step on, for instance, the uh, inland wetlands or anyone else. Um, yeah. uh, well, I think, I mean, it's in here and it was discussed on the 30th that, you know, and it, it, it's in it's in here as a safeguard to our town. So I think to move forward for me, whoever the expert needs to be, we need somebody to analyze this to make sure our safeguards are put in place under that host agreement. And in order to move forward, I mean, the state gave us the le- the, the ability and the leverage to do such and to not add anything would, you know, I know it's going to go through the other processes, but I think it's really important to have somebody look at this so that we can be informed as a town council what the impacts and what protections we need in that area. So how do how do we go about that? So if you can't do it, John, then who do we bring on board? I can't answer that right now. Okay. So I would look for more information on that. I mean, till then, I, I, I personally, I know we're going to vote on this at some point, but as it's written, I can't support a lot of the, the language and just without, uh, even before it gets to the other tiers, I think that, that the town side needs more, you know, more, we need, we need to come back and look at this in a, in a much more uh, under a sharper eye um, as it, you know, I think it, it would serve us justice to do such. And for me to wrap my head around this, uh, I need more time for that. And if we don't have the staff in place, we need to find the staff and make sure that we're, we're vetting this the appropriate way to put the protections in, because as we learned in the past, it's hard to pull them back later. So I look for those, uh, that, that public act uh, 21-1 to really, um, you know, in, encourage our town um, to find a way to um, draft something up that um, I did state that on the 30th. If you go out and watch the video, that's why I'm very passionate about this because I feel like it fell into a, a bit of an echo chamber. Unfortunately, it's voted upon and sometimes we get the consensus of the council and unfortunately, sometimes my my name falls short under that. But again, I speak again openly and publicly about my concerns for that as I did on March 30th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Kassiri. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, hi, Mr. Quinn. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm sorry to keep going back to this, but because there is a lot of residential concern, I feel like I just want to clarify a few things, okay? Sure. Um, so you are officially removed from Got Space at this point. I am not part of Got Space. Okay. Is Got Space completely dissolved? I have no idea. I'm, I've been out of God space for some time, papered out completely. Okay. But any edge is not currently involved in any pending litigation? Absolutely not. Okay. Are you aware if God space is involved in any pending litigation? I understand that there, there, are, there is some litigation there, yes. Okay. Not, not, not driven by me, driven by the, the, person that, the person that tried to take over the company. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, you stated that you submitted to know your client. Is that a form of a background check? Yeah, the, the, the you can have um, the town manager tell you. I submitted all my information. They have it, and I think they vetted it. Okay, I'm sorry. Did you say yes, that is a background check? As far as I know, they asked me to submit all my information. I assume that's what they're doing with it, a background check. That is, that is correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and so you are looking for this land swap because it is going to make this more environmentally friendly, correct? We will be able to shape the building footprint in such a way that it will be helpful to the overall site and to both the town and us, we believe. It'll allow us to stay further away from any water source, which is more, if you look at the plan to the left side of the property, it keeps us further away from that which makes the process a whole lot easier. We could be hundreds of feet away in some instances from where we need to be away. And that would be a, a much simpler approval process and probably faster. Okay, thank you. And um, my last question is, do you have a website or any type of um, web address? No, and we're not gonna have a website uh, yet. We're gonna have a website probably designed within the next few months, but it's a process and uh, no, we're not gonna have it. Okay. Um, when we're you- dealing. We're dealing with this with customers now. Um, under NDAs, we have. We're dealing with some uh, uh, customers. A, a number of customers actually now. Some make casual inquiries. Some want deeper inquiries. And um, it's like Zoom. We don't have to go to meetings anymore. We really don't have to advertise, and we're not going to advertise now on a website. We're just going to go through and, and 
work our process the way we've established it. Okay, if you establish anything, if you could just notify the town manager so he can reach out to us. Thank you. We'll let you know. Councilor Franco. Thank you. Uh, town manager Burt. So God Space is who we have a contract with right now. And what have we received from God Space saying that they no longer want to be in this contract? We've not received anything. And again, that's on a different property, as well as uh, you could have, there's nothing even limiting one company from having the ability, you know, just having the same type of agreement on the same property. But we've received nothing from God Space, but that's totally different property and not involved with this at all. So God Space could potentially still build over there with under right. the agreement that we currently have with them. Right. I don't think it's likely from what I hear, but another group could come in, get the rights to the property and uh, also get, you can have more than one host agreement on one site. <clears throat> then it comes down to who's ready to build. All right. So we are still basically in a contract with got space and it's not void. Is that what you're saying? Not at this point. <clears throat> okay. And has CCM reviewed our contract when we originally made it? CCM. CCM. Um, I, forget. I mean, they were, I remember they were, they were involved. I don't remember if they looked at the contract or not. It's been too long. I know, because I do remember God, uh, CCM was involved when we created this contract yeah. back then. And I wasn't sure exactly. Um, I, I think we to... were. I think it was more involved with the. Uh, they gave. They kept coming to us about the actual legislation. I think okay. that's what they were reaching out to us on. All right, and then um. So, Mr. Quinn, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Um, let's just say we had an agreement with you. What is your ETA on building? It all depends on exactly what the schedule is from the people that we're dealing with. And it depends on uh, the electrical infrastructure timing to get the electrical infrastructure to the site, but we are ready to go now. We are ready to go now. And you have your finances all lined up. Everything's done. All right, so I just wanna like have a little clarity on this. and just share how I think about the situation at hand. I'm a town counselor. Um, I also listened to the economic development meeting and heard um, the gentleman who spoke there as well. My, the way I think about it is well, as a counselor, I'm supposed to be looking into the development, I mean, the, um, the agreement as well as the land swap. Um, how you, what you do with your business or how you sell or who you sell space to, I don't think is quite, you know, my, is, is not something I should be looking at. It's in whether you're going to be successful or how much revenue you're going to make and all that type of thing is not my business because you are a private entity building on land that basically you're purchasing, but you do would like to do a land swap on industrial land um, and on this industrial land, if it wasn't any other business, if they didn't need the land swap, it wasn't a data center, it could be something very industrial, could be bad for the community. And if they didn't need these things, they would just go to planning and zoning. They would purchase their land and go to planning and zoning. And that would be that nothing would come to the council. So it's not my, my viewing of this is that we should be careful and review the agreement. And if we would like to add something or remove something, this is our opportunity to do so and have a conversation about it. And um, I have no problems with environmental issues being, you know, safeguards being put into the development, the agreement. I have no problems with that. But, um, and if, we could get the proper terminology and wording to add that in. I mean, it sounds like you don't have an issue with it either. Um, but 
it's sort of like we're not recreating the wheel. We're using the, I would think as a council, we're using the old agreement. We've, we've been sent it. We should be reviewing it and we can tweak it to things that we may like to see in there. And that's what we should be discussing at this meeting if we wanted to go forward with that. Um, so with a land swap, I can, I, the way I look at it is it's going to be further away from our reservoir. And that is a good thing. It's still going to be on industrial land, um, which could be developed if, by any kind of manufacturing or all kinds of different things. Um, so I don't really seem to have a problem with the land swap that, um, and then we are going to be giving some back to the community and it's going to be butted right up next to open space as it is. So that also grows the open space list. And some people will be very excited about that. Um, so not, the only thing that I and uh, that I'm concerned about is that if we have two data centers possibly building next to each other and we are in agreement with one of them already, and if we go into an agreement with you, that's two agreements on abutting lands. And how do we deal with this with grant and utilities and such you know and such like that? So that's my my issues. Um, and hopefully we can get this figured out and sorted out by our next meeting. But I think the contract, which the counselors that were here previously, we read through the contract, we brought our concerns forward on that contract and, um, and it passed. So it's from our vantage point, other than maybe the environmental issues, which I think would also be taken care of at planning and zoning it in land wetlands and all the other committees that you would have to go through anyway. I think it's, um, I think it was a good contract. I mean, there were, the only thing I had some issues with was possibly how do we deal with something if um, there's an issue that arises. Like, let's just say you default on payment one year. How do we deal with that? And it's going to have to be litigation. It's That's in the no. contract. That's right yeah. in the contract. Right. And it's like basically litigation. It's not, we're not going to go through mediation or anything like that. And because it's not a tax, we can't put a lien on your property. It's, it would be litigation. And I remember, because I went back and I reviewed the meeting and I, these are things that, you know, issues back then. But we may I respond to, more. may I respond to a couple of the points, please? Sure. Uh, a big chunk of the land swap is going to be set back. The front part of that land swap is all going to be set back. It allows us to bring the building a little over the line, but not onto the street. It just brings us over the line, and it takes away that setback area from there, so it gives us a little bit of a tuck up in the corner. It also is going to be a little easier to install the fiber into the highway without tearing up more of the land there. It would be closer to where that is. That's one, that's one thing. Tomorrow, I'm going to send language. This is really for the state to determine, and they are going to determine at this session. Our, we have two political consultants. Uh, they've both been with us for about you know some period, a long period of time. They're still with us, and they're telling us the state's going to propose some of this language this legislative session. Now, we all know probably that this legislative session is going to be about budget items, but I'm told that they're going to bring up uh, this tier four, tier two thing that I had previously agreed to in writing and it's out on the internet. Okay. So tomorrow I'm going to put that language together and I'm going to have uh, someone that works on our, our team add it into that contract, highlight it, and I'm going to have it sent over to the town manager so you'll have copies. The state's going to do this anyway. We've already agreed to it and we would only build in this fashion, but to make sure that we know we're doing the right thing for the town, we'll add that. So it is exactly the same contract that we had exactly, except that we took the name, there's a name change because it's public record, we can do that. And then we have a, a, a strip out of it, which is for the sound attenuation that Wallingford paid for to get this done. And it's just a ambient sound and, and a calculation that they did. Now they have a lot of experience in Wallingford, probably more than Groton does because they have uh, they have a concert venue there, okay, Live Nations, 
and they've had a lot of problems with Live Nations and so forth. So they're very in tune to this. So we've met. I've also met some of the people that are involved with Live, Live Nations as part of this process. I met them in Hartford and I went through the sound issues with them and so forth to get an education about how this would be affecting the company if we can meet the qualifications. I will tell you for 100% certain that this is the strongest sound attenuation rule in the United States. It's going to be very hard to meet, except that in Groton, you have ambient sound from the highway, which gives you a certain decibel level. So we think we'd be okay at that particular location using the same sound attenuation language. You can't use more because then you can't build the data center. So that, uh, that uh, is the second. The third thing, your comment about you're going to have to go after uh, a default on a host fee agreement. There has never been a data center bankruptcy. You can look, Google that and take a check on that. Secondly, it's the most valuable asset class now in the world. Could it change? Yes, it's above everything else. All kinds of commercial space. It's above retail space. It's above housing now. It's a, it's a top asset class. Uh, it's even above um, uh, uh, most crypto classes as far as stability. I, I, so you can also look that little piece up. Um, so I will send over that tomorrow. Uh, at some point, it might take me to the end of the day by the time I get the consultant and, and add the language, I'll have to pull it. But I will put something into that language uh, for the town that addresses the environmental. So let's talk about what this means environmental. Okay, what does that broad sense mean? How much land gets disturbed? That's the first part of the environmental uh, uh, piece, right? Data centers are gonna have the building and a small parking lot. Yes, the building's big, but it's a small parking lot. The roadway is gonna be minimal. So as far as site, data centers go often, depends on the site and the size of the building, six to 10% of the size of the entire parcel is all they actually utilize. When the town allows, in some towns, 20%, 25, 40% coverage, depending on where you go. So it's always under in size and it never needs ever, not even in Wallingford, have they asked, in fact, their last draft of their zoning is no, no parking study because they know it's minimal parking uh, on a data center. So th there's a couple environmental pieces. Then you go to just two more things. Knowing that the entire building is self-contained, in other words, if there was ever a problem, it's in basically a fully contained environment there, okay? whether it's a generator or diesel at, at fuel. If you go on and look at New Albany, Ohio, look at the Facebook center, you can zoom right in. You'll see exactly how this thing is built. It's crispy, clean, high tech. We'll have the engineers in to explain how this all works, how things get delivered, all of that uh, during the during the approval process uh, with with no issue. So then there's then there is air conditioning. Okay. Uh, environmentally, people talk about it. it's going to be a cooling system. So yes, in the summer the air conditioners will be it'll be running. And then in the, in the winter months, uh, about four or five months in Minnesota, we might get three and a half or four months out of it. If the weather keeps like it's been this last month and a half, it's going to be different every year. But there's a certain temperature where they go to a fan system and they use, they use ambient air to cool the data center. It has to be brought to an exact temperature. So there's a little energy used there, but this ambient air makes it very efficient. And those are the major components of a data center. Now, if you use tier two and tier four diesels, the tier two diesels only come on when there's a power outage in an emergency situation. And tier four is for peak shaving, just like the town of Groton already does. And that's why we're at the town of Groton, they peak shave. So we'll need to peak shave to be able to keep the overall price down. Why is that important? Because the data centers won't come unless we can stabilize a, co a cost uh, at a certain level and have, we did 20 year studies and so forth uh, that have this uh, stabilization rate. And, and part of the benefit right now in getting this done is that uh, gas prices, even although they've recently spiked up, have remained generally low. Uh, we, can't, we can't use gas engines to, uh, for backup generation because there's only five decatherms of gas available in the entire region. We've done these, uh, this. We've, We've done all the uh, studies and so forth, so we can't use it. So we're, we're going to be as efficient as we can with tier two, tier four. And we are going to, you know, these, these companies are hyper uh, interested in the renewable portion. Uh, there will be renewables um, that they provide outside of anything the state or, or local, locale will provide or require rather, they will provide because they have their own agendas and their own boards strictly for renewables. 
So you're welcome to read into any of this. Uh, we like, but we're looking to get these folks uh, in a comfortable placement. And that is a pad site approval. So you know where I stand from the beginning. I'm looking to come in with, we have 60, we might have 65 or 70%. I'm trying to be conservative of the work done. Uh, we'd like to get a plan for a pad site approval. Um, we're not going to get a building permit at this point. We're going to get the pad site approval, post fee agreement, electrical infrastructure work, and we're going to have to deliver this to the people that we're talking to. And at that point, it gets contracted. And that's going to happen anywhere in the state. It doesn't happen willy-nilly. That's how this process works for anybody else. Right. Uh, so and, I'm and sorry about the long answer, but I wanted to get it all in. No, thank you. And that's what I was trying to say is like, I also believe that planning and zoning and like inland wetlands and all these things are going to take care of these things. I mean, that's usually not my role as a town counselor. I mean, it is to worry about the environment, but when it comes down to the details of it all, that would be planning and zoning and also with inland wetlands, because that's not something that I know all the regulations and that I am privy to how all those regulations work. Um, I, I don't know. recall... Yes, I'm sorry. Then, of course, state and EPA permits also have to be have to be done beyond that. And right. those are all regulations that Groton really, I mean, they can they can make them tougher, but uh, those are all in place now, state and federal permits. Okay. And then also, I do recall from last conversations, Chief Driscoll, um, I had spoken with him back when the, the other situation, you know, the other host agreement had come forward. And Chief Driscoll had said he has no concerns as a fire chief um, of him being able to take care of a building if there was any kind of issue there. Because I, some people worry that there's a lot of electricity in there and things of that nature. And he was not concerned about it and that things are used nowadays that aren't as toxic. They're not toxic like they used to be. And they're, not, they're, more, they're better for the environment, I guess, than what they used to be. And he had also said that... Um, he was, he felt confident that he would be good in dealing with anything that ever happened at a data center. So I'm comfortable with that. So thank you for coming and I appreciate it. And I, um, at this time, I don't have anything that I would add to the agreement. I think as far as I'm concerned, it was, it's basically the same as what we went through last time and we went through it pretty in depth from what I can recall. Um, so thank you. I, 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 I thank you so much. I, I, I really recommend you go online and look up New Albany, Ohio. You'll show you the Facebook build. They'll show you how it works. New Albany, Ohio, Facebook. Just And there's a number of videos out. Uh, it depends on how long you want to watch. But you'll see what this process looks like from the town to the actual construction to what servers look like inside the building to all of the various components of how this works, how it's set up, how the process it takes, who's hired to do the work, all of this is in these videos. And I'm quite surprised because this is not common to see these types of videos. I hope they still have it posted. I haven't looked in a month or more, but uh, uh, th usually these big companies don't put this kind of stuff online. Uh, right. So it's, it's, it's interesting to see. And also- Thank you. I actually will check that out. And um, I will have to just, just say it. My, I mean, my husband built data centers basically for New Haven, um, for Yale, and has been very involved in that, in IT at Yale and the cloud and all these other things. So I'm pretty, I'm sort of versed in some of the IT stuff. And when I don't know, I just ask him and more than happy to explain it in, in depth. <laughs> well, so I'd like to add, I'd like to add one more thing. The head of Yale Computer Science and I have spoken uh, on a couple occasions and emailed and um, Dr. Lin Zong, it finds that uh, the locations that we've selected are going to be absolutely critical to the infrastructure of all of New England, not just Connecticut. And it's going to make a big, big difference in our future connectivity. And we're talking about the future in two years, not 20 years from now. Right. Uh, and uh, and, 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 and I'm sorry, and has offered to help us however he can in the process. Right. So, and Yale has a place that they're um coloing over in Wallingford. So, I mean, we do have a lot of hospitals down in our area as well, and I don't know exactly what they're using and the tiers that they're using as well. So, um, I wish you luck, and I don't, have, I don't have an issue right now with what we're going forward with the contract agreement. Thank you. Yeah. 
Councilor Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Quinn, are you able to bring the map up? I'm just trying to understand completely where the land swap is. I can't, but uh, but the town manager has it. So is it the green area being swapped? Just tell me which piece is being swapped. It says potential land grant to the left. Okay. You see that? Yes, I do. So it's not an even swap. The town intends to do a and and we we agreed that we would pay for it, uh, whatever the cost is, but do a do a uh, you know an appraisal on both pieces and find out what the difference is, and that's what we would agree uh, to and pay the difference of, and uh, that would be the spot. So you're talking about the green area, the 17 acres would be swapped for the the potential land grant gray area. Is that, that right? That's right. Not an even swap, whatever the whatever the math is. We, we, we're we not looking to get paid. We're looking to donate the balance of it. So whatever okay. would work out for the town so would be okay. What you're trying to do, and then the, the yellow area, what is those five acres and one acre? And okay, those are, those are, once we know whether or not, so we didn't waste time, once we know whether or not we can effectuate this land swap, those are state parcels. Uh, we've reached out. Okay. We're not certain we can get them, but the engineer has given us indications that he believes they would be available, not being used by the state. Uh, some of it was during a construction process, he tells us. So uh, we believe that we could get those pieces, but they are not, absolutely not critical for us to finish the job. It would be good to have the five acre piece uh, because we'd like to be able to have some um, uh, you know, an easy ability to run the fiber, but uh, it's it's not of consequence if we can't get it. So basically, and if what it takes too long to, to get it, if it takes, I'm sorry to interrupt you. If it takes too long to get it, we're going to leave it off the list. Too. Leave it off. So so basically, what you're trying to do is kind of square off this piece of property, and by having those 17 acres that go along Flanders, that'll kind of even that that whole space out. Is that am I? correct? Yes, yes, because if, if we look at the setback from the back side of the green and so forth, it, it pushes us even further back. So there, there is a, a dark spot kind of where the area says data campus area. Do you see that in the center yep. of the main piece? Yes, okay. Yep. In the center, there is a vernal pool. We're trying to stay far away from that as we possibly can. You can stay two to 400 feet. We'd like to stay all of four if we can. That allows us to scooch it up near the highway a little bit more, where, by the way, there's already a little bit of noise from trucks and cars going by 24 hours a day. So we tuck it back up in that corner. It might be good. We get the setback. That would be the general area. Now, there is an area further to the south and setback where we could put another smaller building, but we're not focused on that with this particular client. We'd like to get that swap happening and then and put that building up close to where you see the yellowish area and the green in that corner. Sort of and we, I, I don't know if, uh, if uh, the town manager has the plan the latest plan that the engineer proposed maybe a week or 10 days ago, but I'll be happy. I'm making notes here. I will okay. forward the, um, I will forward along with the tier two, tier four environmental language. I will forward a, a plan for you to look at. We've done this in other towns. I have no problem showing you potential location. Now, what we did is we divided it up into two buildings at 250,000 square feet. Those are 32 megawatt standard size data center hyperscale buildings. But we can push those two together to get to the hyperscale size. So the plan may have them side by side. But let me get you the plan. For one building, okay. So, and, and let uh, me get you the plan. Town Manager, can you just bring, John, can you bring that map back up again? I have two questions that relate to that map also. Great. So, so Tom, can you tell us where you're thinking that people would uh, access from, it, it, access would be from Flanders to get into the property? Do you have a sort of a sense of where that might be on? Uh, it won't be, it won't be on the left side through the land grant. It will be somewhere along the road here. Um, okay. And we will, you know, we'd have to determine where the, where the, um, uh, unless we get the land swap taken care of, and then it'll come in through that land swap area. And everything will be consolidated oh, okay. up into okay. that corner. The up parking. into that corner. All right. Yeah. Now, yeah. the other thing that you mentioned was possibly bringing in sewer for this building. There, I don't believe there's sewer along that section of Flanders. Where would you be connecting into for that? Well, I don't have that information right in front of me, but we've had that discussions at the engineer's office in New London about that, and he has better info, so I'm not sure I can 
Uh, I can tell you, Chris, do you happen to know, or are you still on? Yeah, coming from 117. Uh, that's what the engineers talked about. From coming up along the highway and then coming through uh, the potential land grant to the to the buildings. Okay. So coming in really from the backside is where you yeah. think. Yeah. Where, so it where... doesn't go through the neighborhood of Hazelwood. Okay. It goes along the highway where the city of Groton has land out in front of um, the Pequot Medical Center and then running along the uh, parallel to the highway uh, was okay. would be the access. Just okay. to be crystal clear, Councillor Jones, we, we are not going to use uh, um, hazelnut to either build or use as a right, regular right away. We're not going to use that. Okay. So most of your power and your sewer will all come in along the highway so to, and your, um, your data lines is pr pretty much is where you're thinking of. That's right. Okay. All right. And then, um, so this could be two buildings or it could be one building, which is basically two just pushed together. Uh, John, I'm good with the map. Thank you. Um, if you're building things into the future, does this site have enough expansion? And is that something that if you're going to expand this in the future? Okay, so the, so the market the market's looking now for 100 acres to 120 acres. Okay, there's 115 here, so we fall right in the in the in the right sweet spot for that okay. uh, that ask. The um, there probably will be no expansion if they put these two buildings together or a little bit more than those two buildings and square it off into one big building at a hyperscale level. Uh, there would be, if you put two buildings together, the footprints are around 250,000 square feet. If you push those together, you have 500 and a two and a two story building. So it gives the site enough flexibility. Also at that point we'll be low on power. So there's only so much power available. So you run out of one of two things in this business. You run out of land or you run out of power. So you're so working I think that with that, those, that six to 10% land coverage ratio fits with 100 acres and it gives you the 10 acres you need for the plant and yeah. and that's right the, the hard building would be over five or six acres yeah. and then um you would have the uh the parking which would be you know maybe an acre yeah, and uh yeah. you know not even an acre probably okay all right um all right that's great thank you thank that's you great. thank you for answering the questions you're welcome John, I'm good with the, with the map. Thank you, Councilor Kassiri. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. M Mr. Burr, are we aware if any of the other municipalities have ended their agreements with Got Space? I'm not aware. Mr. Quinn, okay. can you weigh in on this at all? I don't, I don't actually know that because I've completely disconnected from all of that. We're on a new path now, so uh, I don't know. Okay, thank you very much. Council Bordelon. Uh, thank you. Um, I guess uh, for the town manager and uh, Deb Jones, um, I know this will go through, you know, obviously the planning and zoning and the, all the different departments, but what I saw in the past is if we don't have certain things in our agreement ahead of time, sometimes it's hard to add them after. Is that correct? I mean, if there's certain things we want to see in there, we should front load it before it goes to them because it's not appropriate to always put it on the backs of them solely if there's certain things we want to see. Um, so I'm just looking to, to get some clarification on that. That is true, but I, I am definitely in favor of adding in the language they're proposing. Once we have it, we can share it and look further into it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there needs to be multiple discussions with the council to look at this agreement and figure out ways to add that language that would seem fit prior to it going there um, because they might identify their own issues. I understand we're not the environmentalists, but we do speak on behalf of simplicity of items that, you know, things that we have of, of concern that are in there because if these are raised, then it gives us some form of protection. Is that correct? Are you, am I, am I to respond? Um, I'm asking John or Deb, like okay. at, in our development agreement, having um, something in there, you know, we have it defined because as we found with other developments, we can't go back after and start adding things. If it, once it leaves, we need to have the, the information in there. Uh, that's the case with any contract. Yes. Right. So that's why the, the need to have it prior to before planning and zoning is what I'm trying to say. Yes. Planning and zoning is a catch 
and they do a lot of work, but we should not put the pressure on them to vote down a property or a idea based on their decision alone. If we have concerns, we should be putting them in that contract beforehand, which has not happened in some cases, and then we're left standing there with the bag. So that's that's my concern. Um, and whatever, you know, Mr. Quinn brings forward is one visual idea to ponder, but I think there needs to be time made for this council to look at this agreement and look at that in its entirety along with what they propose, but what do we propose? We have not sat down and had those discussions. I did bring it up at the meeting on the 30th and nothing has made it into this uh, as of yet. Um, so the, the, it was proposed, but nothing has botched. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we should have more conversation with our town staff, town attorney under that section to see what we can and what it would look like um, and how we we start to um, you know move forward um, with that uh, idea of um, what the wording should be for that area. Um, because if we wait too long, then it cannot be corrected. So I will not support this until, again, like I stated, we have those conversations. So we haven't had them. It has not been surveyed in the sense where we've talked about it. We have not you know, looked at the language based on the state, what our rights are as a town on a municipality level. Um, I think that's important. And I think under another item under God's map, I mean, quite, quite frankly, I mean, I think we should be looking at, you know, under another item, what is our plan with that in conjunction? I did look back at my notes and this map of the land swap came up before actually. Was that with God's base or? Probably. Well, yeah, but with this, yeah, this is not a new map because yeah. I just pulled up my old notes under my agendas. This is not a new map. Is that correct? That's a new map. Well, fairly new. Yeah, we just it's had not a new in the sense what I'm saying. I've seen this before under the meeting. This proposed land swap was that land swap brought up with 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 God's base or the other company. I always I, I was the person that put the land deal together, mm -hmm. but that is not the exact map that we had. And it, it it's the same 17 acres. It hasn't moved. And the idea to swap land hasn't changed. All that was from the beginning, and I think uh, that Deb Jones will tell you when we met with her, I proposed that from the beginning. And I just want to answer the rest of your question, Counselor. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to provide all of the language, not some, all of the language that Machinsky, Rep. Machinsky, wanted to put in this bill at the 11th hour to try to sink the data deal. I'm going to add the Tier 4, Tier 2 language in. That is the environmental language that the state's looking for. And they've done some serious research. So I'd be happy to add that in. Uh, and I'll do that tomorrow by the end of the day, I hope. But you'll have it no later than the following morning, along with the redraft. So you'll have the original agreement, the sound attenuation, and the state language in there. We have no problem with it. Right. So again, to answer my question, was this land swap map that I have in my possession from another meeting originally with the first group that you were working with? Because this is all, it seems like- I don't see meeting. the land, I, I, I want to be cooperative. I just don't see the original, I don't have the original map, but if there is a map that says there is a land swap, that was my idea from the beginning. Taking yeah. the state pieces was my idea. Walking the land, going right. to see the seller at his office, that was all me, yes. So this, so this land swap, so I, I guess my next question is, how would that look with the open contract with the other entity? This same land swap is being proposed. How would that this look? This land is not covered. It is not covered by the God Space Agreement whatsoever. It's not okay. named in the God Space Agreement. That's what the other side of the John, can you double check on that? Because no, I, I, I've already we did with, yeah, we did with no Eric Callahan, your town attorney. We've done all yeah. this. Yeah, mm. there's no bearing on this property. Mm, because this map came up before. So I just... Um, Okay, I think that that would be um, appropriate, and uh, and the language uh, that you discussed, um, you know, I think that needs to be. We'll get that right over to you. Um, looked at um, and then re-reviewed, um, but I guess it draws under other business. I guess I, that was where I'll ask my other questions regarding the old contract with the old company because. This now, um, it seems, I don't know, there's some gray areas now that come to light. 
So in order to um, look at this in its entirety, I know you're the you're the moving objects that left, you know, whatever the reason may be. But now there's these, now we're going to agree to another contract um, when we have one open contract still there. So well, um, to be perfectly fair to the company, the new company, we would have to come to you anyway to develop this piece of property. And it would require municipal host fee agreement. And that's why we're talking to you tonight. Yeah, you know, I, I, I thank you. I, I'm aware of that. And that's the the part where to, you know, give that municipal host agreement. Um, the other thing is the town of Groton, as a council, we made an initiative to make sure that we were going to, we signed and agreed that we were going to be looking at things in a more environmentally, you know, uh, just fashion. I don't have the agreement in front of me. And that's why I'm really passionate about this. And that's why when I looked at this agreement, as was stated to read through, not seeing any of those protections in there is just it's kind of mind blowing. So are we acting in the will of that agreement or aren't we? Um, and it, I, I don't think it, you know, it should come propelled. It should be part of all agreements moving forward as, as a, um, something that we should just be doing for good measure. And then once it comes to the council, then we may add more, but this bypassed all of that. And, um, um, I personally think that there needs to be more time set. And even what you bring forward at the person who tried to can it in the 11th hour, that might not fit the need. There might be other things missing that that stuff doesn't necessarily mean it's going to pertain to the town of Brought in its entirety. So, um, you know, I, with respect to, you know, how, how that is going to look, I, I can't say you just, cause it's in there doesn't mean I'm going to say, yep, perfect. That's great. Um, it, I do think in these types of meetings to do our due diligence, like this map that we got before with the other agreement, you know, that, that just got presented tonight. It was not part of our original packet. Um, and there was no discussion about the conversations from the prior meetings. And I think that we just kind of, things go dormant for a while. And I think it's really important before we go before another developer or another person who's going to develop something and bring something, some initiative that we have to sign on, that we review the notes from the prior meetings and those notes are very important and and i take that very seriously and i feel um as though some of that stuff was just you know kind of missing tonight um and wasn't even mentioned and somewhat bypassed um my last question is how many acres of trees do you think you're going to have to clear i'm not going to throw a number out in a public forum to guess but i just said about a couple or three times that six to ten percent closer to six on larger parcels is approximately the coverage area. It's the least possible industrial use that you probably can find. So you'll have to get the, the building footprint six acres. So there's six of 115 acres. The parking's gonna be at least an acre, an acre and a quarter, maybe. That's seven acres. And then you need a road in on 115 usable acres and 40 some odd acres donated. Mm -hmm. Right. Very minimal footprint. And, and one big my, building and john what's the financial impact for the town um from the revenue yeah what are we looking at and what, let's, what let's is try. being what's the what's what is the town staff's direction i mean we have Paige brock and john reiner here and yourself and with along with deb jones where do you guys see this being what are your thoughts as a fit for rotten uh, from what from I know, the environmental, yeah. from the financial, from the the you know energy load to the watershed. I mean, what are you? Well, Brown Utilities is the appropriate one, and they've been working directly with them on the utility load, um, as well as uh, having a, a study done. But uh, I'm certainly in favor of of data centers, and you know, in Page, Deb, and John, if you have anything to add. Or I'm more than because happy again, just... there could be much, there could be a much worse use by rights there that we'd have no say on. Uh, Paige Brock, Economic and Community Development Manager, um, definitely in support of data centers in Groton as an emerging industry. Um, we are reliant upon a select few industries. We also have. Uh, little industrial land remaining. We have been approached uh, on these parcels by a number of industrial uses in the past, and uh, data centers are certainly 
far less uh, environmentally concerning to Groton than some of the other uses. Some of the uses that we've been approached on would be large scale transportation centers. There was a battery manufacturer. Um, there were others as well that we have heard of individually or have been approached by the state. Um, I also know that there are significant economic benefits to municipalities from data centers, not only from a revenue generating standpoint, but also secondary benefits. Um, as I stated, it would be an emergency, uh, an emerging industry. And that means that over time, you build some supporting uh, secondary companies as well that will be servicing these data centers. Although I'm not an expert in data centers, what I know is that and once it's built, it's not that old that that equipment has to be updated, serviced, replaced. So you end up with these secondary supporting companies that are entering town that also start to contribute um, so I, I think if we already have some roots regarding defense industry. We already have roots regarding biotech. Um, if we could do a better job in growing some roots in other industries, such as technology, I think that rounds out our economy. And of course, uh, people do know about the, um, the direct revenue that would be gained by Groton. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bumgarner. If um, Councillor McBride wants to, I know he's had his hand raised for a little while. If he wants to go ahead and leave, certainly. Fine. Absolutely. Councillor McBride. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Quinn, for this presentation and your team. Um, I'm a new councillor and I apologize for being late to this meeting. So I didn't, I didn't receive the first few minutes of it, but I want to appreciate your time. Thank you for your time and answering a lot of questions. It seems to me that this council and the past council have done a lot of work on this agreement. So I'm kind of uh, in favor of what Councilor Franco was saying that not a lot of changes uh, do need to be made because a lot of time is, it seems to have spent on the initial agreement. But I do also uh, hear Council Borlon that there, there, there may appear to be some changes that we should make on this agreement. So my question is more, it appears that we have a timing issue um, because if we had a few more weeks or six weeks, whatever it is to flush out uh, the questions that we still have in terms of uh, the environmental uh, and other other comments that, that Councilor Bordelon wants to incorporate. Isn't that something that we can pursue? It seems like we have some time that we can make the changes we need to ensure that this uh, host community agreement or, or however you're calling it is in the best interest of the town. So what's the concern with adding a little bit more time to make sure this document is fully vetted and is in the best interest of the town and in your company. If this is something that's, you know, a long-term 20, 30 year commitment, uh, what's the timing issue on your end? When, when do you need this actually fully vetted uh, to move forward? And this is obviously and we need it done at the next meeting. We need to have a vote. I understand the brevity of it, but we're gonna to need to have a vote one way or another at the next meeting. We have a client that I have, uh, I've been working with. This client is ready to come. If you contact the people up at the state level, the names I gave you earlier, you'll find out that it's the state is very hot right now. Uh, this is a client that I've been working for 14 months uh, and spent a lot of time and travel pulling this together. Um, they want to know, they want answers to their questions, um, and I'm trying to give it to them. We, that's why we continued on with phase ones and we continued on with uh, the, uh, the engineering pieces and the electrical engineering uh, pieces, and we're, we're moving quickly in the background uh, in trying to pull this all together. Now, I'm going to provide tomorrow the agreements that both uh, that the, what the state wanted and the, and the pledge that I made uh, to Machinsky, who was obviously aligned with the needs that uh, of, of the folks that wanted these environmental uh, things addressed. I'm going to provide that language tomorrow. This is online stuff. You can call the rep yourself to match it up. She can give you the letter. Um, the, this letter has already been vetted, uh, Councillor, for a few months the last time. It's exactly the same, except that I added, enhanced it with sound attenuation, which Wallingford paid a sound consultant to do, as I said earlier, and go through that process. So we took that language 
cut it from there and pasted it right into the agreement, exactly the same language that they proposed. They may, may have a question about me doing that, but I, I, I am really big on making sure that each town uh, it, you know, is treated equally in this process. I think it's the best thing to do for this business and for others uh, and you know, anyone coming in. So, uh, so yes, I, um, uh, I'll get this other language over right away. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm okay for uh, direct questions from counselors in writing. If you'd like me to do that, uh, uh, the uh, town manager has my email address. So I'm happy to accelerate the process any way I can. We're working every single day, including weekends. Uh, we often have West Coast calls late in the evening. I'm available. So um, I don't see any reason to, uh, to um, uh, go through a process that might just be uh, a, a non-changer uh, for this agreement. Already agreed to it. We've added sound. I'm going to add the, the environmental language that the state is looking to enact. That way you'll have it before the state even votes on it. <laughs> and um, it'll be the same language you can copy it. So I think I will have provided everything necessary. We really need to get in to see the inland waterways people to get through that process and get through the um, uh, uh, pad site permitting process uh, without wasting any time. And a month is a lot of time in this business. Uh, we've, it, we've, we've lost some months, uh, not through anything that I could directly control. We've lost some time, but I've kept these people on cue for this particular location. They have CAD drawings and they're doing their own things uh with this with this um with this site but i'd like to keep them in play and it's a major it's a major company that you would all recognize okay and just to follow up i uh, would appreciate seeing additional information and review um this Tomorrow, is a, yeah. this is a lot yeah. to digest and i'm not sure what the council thinks or or how the town manager wants to move forward but i think um it may take several more meetings to, to digest and flush this all through. And I'm not sure if the council has to have special meetings or what the thoughts are, uh, but this, a lot to ask, at least for me, to come into this and really wrap my hands around this and understand it is a lot to, uh, to take on and, and to ask a vendor such as yourself for a few more weeks and not be able to do that. Uh, it kind of raises some eyebrows in, in my view. So, but I am supportive of the project. I completely understand your position. I do understand it. It's just that this is an exact duplicate of what was already approved by this same council with a few exceptions of people and sure. then some other additional enhancements. But I, I do understand what you're saying. Uh, I'm Thank you for your time. I, I do think it's Thank you. I appreciate your concern. Councilor Baumgartner. Yes, I've been listening very intently. I think it's been a great dialogue and I commend the council, every counselor for asking um, very in-depth questions, especially to the newer counselors who were not um, familiar with the kind of the behind the scenes of, of um, you know, these negotiations and, and um, obviously the adoption of this, uh, of the original host agreement. Um, but just um, a question again regarding the, the land swap. Um, I noticed that the property is adjacent to the, the sheep farm. Um, and so, you know, was there any discussion with um, some DEP folks or a DEP folks or a GOSA um, with respect to, you know, what the impacts would be on uh, kind of the long term uh, plans for uh, the, you know, for trails and, um, and obviously the, the environmental impacts on those properties in particular? Um, re in recent years, um, the with support from the state, um, GOSA acquired a property to its south, now you know named as Sheep Farm, Sheep Farm South, um, which is a much larger tract of land than the, um, you know, obviously than the, the sheep farm is. And so, if if anybody can speak to that, and um, you know, not obvious, not just um, Mr. Quinn, but uh, some town folks as well, uh, town staff. I honestly would have to look back on my notes. I feel like we did because we had a lot of dialogue about how that would work. I know they were aware of it. And I, it's you know, it, this went on for years, <laughs> so I'd have to look back on my notes to know it's been a while. Now maybe somebody else remembers more. Um, anyone? 
anyone from planning? We can certainly engage them. This okay. piece would add 45 acres to that piece. Uh, I know that piece. I saw it as the state approved the uh, the purchase. I think it was in six fifty or seven hundred thousand dollars for that piece of land. Uh, I did track that uh, completely. Uh, I have not had uh, ghost discussions uh, about that, but there, uh, you know, the, uh, but th that piece adds. I, I'm not sure what the acreage is. It's approximately the size of the industrial piece. Uh, Chris does know better. Chris, do you remember? Andre, is that the land that abuts onto Fort Hill? Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah, that's over 100 acres. 100 it's, acres. Yeah, I think it's over 100 acres. So initially it was going to be a 55 and older, and it was over 200 and I think eight units that we're going to build on there. That's what I recall. Um, so yeah, that that's uh, that's further south. Um, but the 45 or the the grant area, um, I believe, abuts the sheep farm, but not that. 100 acre portion because that's right. further south, I think. Right. And, and as an aside, uh, Mr. Quinn, um, you know, I, I do have to commend you on, on two aspects. Um, you know, obviously, your very public commitment on uh, supporting the project labor agreement, um, should you build these, um, you know, uh, build, build these data centers, obviously, very important that any construction, major construction project, uh, there is an emphasis on uh, hiring local and preferably uh, union work. So um, that is something that, you know, I'm always supportive of and would implore, you know, really for any development project, including housing um, infrastructure to be done uh, in that fashion. Uh, and then secondly, you even made the comment about um, Representative Mashinsky, and I, I had the privilege of sitting next to her on uh, the finance committee when I served in the state house. And, uh, you know, I consider myself a tree hugger, but, you know, she definitely takes that uh, to a whole nother level. So. Uh, certainly, if you can convince her on something that that is, um, I think that that speaks volumes. Um, uh, and lastly, you know, we we did receive uh, some questions, obviously, from constituents, and um, one that came to mind. Um, you know, you 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 are far more familiar, it seems like, than I am, just about the kind of the macro landscape of of data centers. And I know um, last year, for example, uh, in China, um, China banned. Uh, cryptocurrency mining um, last year, and um, since then there has been a significant interest, um, you know, with private equity and um, you know, just uh, business, you know, uh, business leaders in general to um, really kind of stake stake uh, their ground in in the U.S. and um, really support uh, the growth of, of cryptocurrencies. And so, and my question is: is the are the data centers? Uh, is there any proposal or uh, potential for uh, these data centers to be utilized as, uh, you know, cryptocurrency mining facilities? Absolutely not. No, we, no, it's the, the utility, you'd have to go to Texas and get three cent utility, which they're not going to allow uh, with crypto, but they'd have to get, you know, not, not six, seven or eight, whatever the number is going to be with Groton by the time we get the final mile pricing in and get all the infrastructure costs and so forth, but you'd have to be substantially less. Uh, to do anything like that. You'd have to be in an area uh, that comes out. I was talking to another mayor in another town from that came from another state that is familiar with crypto mining and so forth. Um, but I can tell you the digital currency services, which is one of the largest, I think the largest in the world, uh, is coming to Stanford, as you probably saw in the paper. So um, mm -hmm. they're, they're, that's not a mining operation, that's a trading operation, more or less, right? They own 200 companies. So, uh, so we're going to see some. We're going to see a, quite a bit of action. But no, absolutely not. We're not doing. It. No, these are these are companies you names you'd recognize that have data centers that that have you know their own service of proprietary users. All right. Th thank you for uh, that clarification. You're welcome, Councilor Parker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it is nine fifty four, and I just want to remind everyone about the ten p.m rule about continuing business and we still have two other things we need to discuss and we have people that are online mrs snyder is waiting patiently and we've been discussing this item for maybe more than an hour and a half thank you mr quinn mr mcfarland mr 
Regan, for coming out and speaking to us. I know you've reiterated things several times about what you're going to do and looking forward to seeing the paperwork that you're going to present. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Appreciate it. Appreciate all your time. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Parker. Councilor Jones? Um, I just I wanted to sort of just have one final question uh, climbing on top of um, or the, the same things that Councilor McBride said. You had sort of talked about the we have an incredibly short time frame that you're giving us, which is basically you want a decision by two weeks, which would be February 22nd. If we don't have a decision by then and maybe a decision has to come by March 8th, is that it? I mean, if it's not by the 22nd, you walk away and it's done. I mean, is that a hard, fast thing, or do we have a week, or do we have two weeks? I mean, you're you're muted. You're muted. He's muted. So. Sorry, I was muted. I don't want to walk away. No, Groton spent an awful lot of time and effort on this, and and no, we don't want to walk away. I don't want to lose the most valuable part of this, which is the end user. They may walk away. So I'm, I'm trying to move it along. I think we'd be okay with March 8th. If you could take a vote on March 8th, I'm gonna to have to make some calls in the morning and see. Um, uh, we, we have a, a site visit uh, potentially planned a little bit later this month, another visit. And what I'm frankly waiting for is the uh, utility uh, contract confirmation, which I should have. And then the site visit's gonna happen at that time. So um, that's a little too much information probably about that process, but yes, March 8th would be okay if you could get us on on March 8th, please. All right, that's why I just, you had sort of kept saying the two week mark and I just wanted to see how firm that is and if there's some wiggle room in there for us to, to do all the things that we need to do um, by that time. I understand. That still works, okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Council Borlon. Uh, thank you. I also was gonna comment about the time restraint. Um, I think under pressure like that, it is hard and I can respect the fact that this is taking a long time to discuss and it is slowing down the meeting, but I think it's very important to do the due diligence no matter how long it takes. Um, when you came before us the last time, it was very urgent as well and we wanted a response right away and now we're way far away from that. So here we are again with the same urgency and I think this is the opportunity for us to talk and it's the one opportunity we had. So however long that takes, then we need to either make um, time for this to, you know, I, I do not think it's appropriate to work under pressure, time restraints and quickness, because when that happens, mistakes can be made. And that's my thing. Something great could be greater if we give it the proper time. Also, I do think it's important to get the community involvement, as it was stated about the open space area. I have the public has not had a chance to comment on this. Um, Town Manager Burt, is there any initiative to bring the community um, in, involved in this at all? Oh, I don't, I don't do anything until I hear from the council. Mm. <laughs> well, I, I mean, as I've stated always, I think in anything coming, we should in, 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 you know, involve our community. And there's been no community involvement or public, public comment on this to really engage the community. And so that also, unfortunately, will slow things down. But I do think that that needs to happen. And the community should have a right to come forward with questions and concerns. So um, I would encourage, um, do I have to say that, John, I, I recommend, uh, speak for myself, that we have community involvement and, and, and the public forum for such. Um, I think that's really important. So how do we make that happen? Anything that I do, I need guidance from the majority of the council. Okay, so do you want to, do I have to ask it or do you want to ask it? Or does council, uh, Mayor Melendez ask it? How do I? Um, we can, we can ask for consensus from the council. Uh, is there like something specific you have in mind? Mine is just some form of community involvement with public comment and, um, input from the community and a form of presentation for them. I mean, I think it's really important. Okay. And that would allow to uh, open up the space for the open space in that area as well to come out with their questions and concerns. I think it's um, inappropriate to move quickly without having the stakeholders involved in the area and allowing the community input. And as John stated, the town manager, he doesn't feel comfortable without you know, it's the, the, the privy of what we want. I don't feel comfortable without the, the community support, supporting um, initiatives. Okay, so understood. So are you thinking, um, uh, Mr. Burt, is, is like a, a public hearing, um, 
is that something that this could be or is that for just developments and stuff how, how do you feel about that I'll probably start off with a public presentation once we have the new language okay uh, so that that could be just rather than later for the public but i think we want a little more information first right but it can be done quickly and i think it also should allow people to speak one of the things that people don't feel is they have a voice and we only have public comment once a month. I do think that if we do this in as fast as Mr. Quinn would like to move, and I can respect that, we need to then make sure we don't, you know, we use our time wisely and incorporate both so that we're not double tracking. So I think it, uh, um, I think it might be uh, appropriate to start with a presentation. Do we have a consensus from the council to put together a presentation um, on the data centers? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we look like we have consensus on that, Mr. Burt. Uh, point of clarification, is that with comments from the community? Mr. Burt, would your presentation, it, it, it uh, well, we, you know, what we, right. what we could do is like what we did with Riverview, we could do like an hour before the meeting, you know, where people come and ask all their questions and then they can make comments again at public comment if we wanted to do something like that. I think that's great. It allows for, yeah, the dialogue. I think we need that. All right, great idea. Councilor Baumgartner? Yeah, quickly, um, I, I was gonna suggest it should be modeled off of the Riverview land swap uh, hearing, you know, or informal presentation at the beginning and then opportunity for public comment. I thought that ran pretty smoothly and, and you could actually hear a fair exchange of people concerned, supportive, um, and it wasn't, you know, it just seemed like a fair, a, a, a fair process uh, for all all stakeholders um and then uh, secondly just um again this has been mentioned but want to reiterate um you know having conversations with P Paquan bridge fire department uh, any concerns that they have and, and just to air those out publicly uh and and just to hear hear their thoughts because obviously it does fall within on that fire district um certainly uh the you know, I, I do feel like if, if it is possible having some leadership from GU um, just to share with Groton about the impact to the local grid and, and the capacity uh, to, you know, provide power, on, you know, not potentially not just for one data center, but, you know, in the case there could be multiple data centers coming to the town, uh, what, what that will mean for, uh, you know, various other town and city projects that are uh, taking place throughout our town and will be uh, for the horizon. I, I think it's really critical. Um, because, you know, obviously uh, we are all rate payers too. Uh, and then uh, lastly, um, just uh, reading through some of the notes I've been taking, um, planning and zoning. Uh, and I think that was mentioned before, but I very, very firmly believe they should uh, opine or at least, um, you know, share with us what their concerns are if they do have any um, prior to any vote we take, uh, we've done. It, it has been customary for um, to get an advisory opinion from planning and zoning on a few other matters that we have, um, you know, we've asked them to kind of opine on before we've made a decision. And I think that would uh, be to our benefit. There's really no excuse not to because they do meet twice a month. And I believe they will be meeting twice a month even before we have that March meeting. Um, so if we can get some form of, uh, you know, can reach out to them and get their thoughts in writing, uh, that way we can process those before we make a decision. I think it would be um, beneficial for all parties involved. Uh, thank you. Councilor Franco. Thank you. I I don't have a problem with doing a presentation or even having public input, but we did do this all before and we even had a special meeting, a presentation just on data centers where we went through all of these topics and it's it is recorded. And um, there were plenty of questions asked. There was a presentation on all of this. Many of the, the things that we're discussing here were, were talked about. Um, I understand um, how we would like to, um, many of possibly the new people might not be up to speed on some of these things, but also, they could go back and look at some of the old meetings where we did discuss these things. And it's like, we're starting something from step one again, when we're actually much farther along. And, um, 
and maybe if there's any information that the town may have further on data centers could be sent out so that some of the new people could catch up. Um, I, I just don't understand like why we're starting back at step one again, like that, that far back. I don't understand why we're, we're there. Um, other than new people need to catch up and I, I get that, but we've had special meetings on this. So um, I'm good with having a small presentation before a, a meeting and then having open comments, that's fine. But I don't know if we need to invite everybody you know, from the whole community to show up and speak on the matter. I'm not really sure if that's necessary. Um, so thank you. I think uh, some of it would be having some people on hand just to answer questions if they're asked. You know, it's not like uh, Pocahontas Bridge would necessar necessarily present anything, but there might be questions on, you know, from them. So if Chief Driscoll could be there just on hand, that type of thing. Understood. But I, I do recall that this was all fully discussed before. And, and Chief Driscoll has, I mean. True, true. But just so the, the community can ask their questions. Understood. I just. Okay, I have other hands. Um, just uh, be cognizant of the fact that we shouldn't be discussing whether we're going to have a, a, a some sort of presentation or public hearing because, um, you know, it's the consensus of the council that we will. So we're going to have it. Um, so, uh, Councilor Bordelon. Yes, I just was going to say, um, you know, just in regards to the property, um, some of the new things that have come out, like this land swap, there's other things that have come out, uh, the change in names, all of this would be our due diligence. And I think sometimes we do need to go back to square one, as we realize that sometimes, you know, we need to go, it is important to revisit things when we need to. It's not always appropriate to push forward um, in a capacity that doesn't have a chance to reflect back and make sure everything is appropriate where it should be. So I, I think with the land swap, I think, you know, it's not just the data center, you know, there's land involved. How does our community feel about swapping that land? Have we asked? No, I think we should. And so I think that's the important piece. Of water. Thank you. The mayor just said we can't discuss that. All right, Councilor Parker. It is 10 11 p this up seven minutes beforehand. So I'm asking Mr. Mayor about the continuation of the meeting. We have now been on this topic for over two hours. I understand the concerns and some of the conversation has been brought up several times throughout this meeting, same arguments or discussions. Can we move this forward, please? All right, I am seeing no other hands. So I want to thank Tom Quinn and Chris Reagan and forget the other name that we had here. <laughs> but I want to thank you guys for coming out and uh, giving us your presentation. Um, I'm sure we'll be in contact um, uh, frequently. Thank you, Mayor Melendez, and thank you, counselors, for all the time. I do appreciate it. I know it's late. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it is 10.08, so we need consensus from the council to take up any other business. Do we have consensus? I'm fine. I consent. One, two, three, four. I got four right now. Um, I'm not seeing consensus to continue. Um, Mr. Mayor, I call for a roll call vote. Consensus. All right. Let me hold on one second. Let me. I just need to be clear, Mr. Burke. Can we officially vote on uh, consensus, or is that? I don't see why you can't take a roll call vote. I okay. mean. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Bordelon. 
I'm in favor of continuing. Councilor Bumgarner. In favor. Councilor Kassiri. Not in favor. Councilor Franco. Not in favor. Councilor Jones. Not in favor. Councilor McBride. You are muted. I apologize. I will change my vote to not in favor. Okay. Uh, Councilor Parker. Not in favor. Okay, that is five no's. Uh, Councilor Westervelt. I am in favor. Okay. So that will fail three in favor. Orlon Bumgardner and Westervelt, six opposed. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, may, uh, Mayor, uh, to adjourn. So moved. what is your vote on that to move or not move? I guess it should be on the record. Are you saying my personal vote? Yeah, I thought you only said eight or did I count it wrong? I, I apologize. No, 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 three in favor, six opposed. Okay, perfect, thank you. So uh, moved by Franco, seconded by Parker. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. Abstentions? That carries six in favor, three opposed. Bordelon, Bumgardner, Westervelt, zero abstention. We are adjourned at 10 11. Good night.